Hello and welcome to episode 286 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, a place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, the writer of MI666, and joining me this week are the creator of Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. And the writer who's recently gone commando, in comics that is, is Tony Esmond. <laughs> I thought you were going a bit partridge earlier there, <laughs> earlier than normal. I will, uh, I, will, I will activate the partridge mode <laughs> as soon as I possibly can. I love it when you go partridge. Smell my cheese, you mother. We um, got a box of cheese today. I got a relative sent me a box of cheese, and it fucking minged. Oh, I tell you what. I mean, you must go cheese mad this time of year, Tony. Surely. I love a bit of cheese meat. Yeah, there you go. There's the quote of the episode. I'm like um, Jack Ademus and Flyers. Cheese me, cheese, <laughs> cheese me, cheese me, cheese me, baby. What until you lose control? Yep, exactly. Mm. Of my bowels. Uh, well. It's already started, folks. Yes, it's that time of the year. Why is Tony eating so much cheese? Because he's he's mad for protein. Make that what you will. Um, but no, obviously, we're we've, we're getting to the end of 2020, and it's almost Christmas as we speak. Um, it's December the 20th. We're recording on, isn't it? That is yeah crazy. <laughs> That's insane. I'm excited. Where's the year even... gone? What's happened? Exactly. Where has the year gone? It's been um, it's been a what year. That? We... Yeah, that joke about how many sleeps it is till Christmas. Oh yeah, three hundred seventy-one or what it was. Yeah. Day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, we don't need to go into detail how this this year's been difficult for a lot of people because we already know, and we know it's been difficult. Um, but in terms of comics, it's been a bit of a crazy year. Um, it's been crazy for us. It's, there's, there's been productivity. There's been all kinds of happening on social media, etc. But as always, it's that time of uh, year where us three get together and we do our favourites of the year. There's no best of here. Not not with the awesome comics pod, because there is no best of, because all comics are best, because comics are best. How's that? Is that good? That's, That's like good. pure logic. Yeah. Well, logic, isn't it? Yeah. Comics are best. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, in all seriousness, these lists are just the things we've liked. So we you know uh, and we we've, we've slightly I think over the years we do slightly amend what the categories are and stuff don't we um we've got a fewer categories this year because I remember we did it the first year mm. we went nuts we had about 30 categories yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it uh, took all bloody night didn't it I was yes. waiting, I was just about to start going into work <laughs> by the time we finished yeah yeah <laughs> I think we gave like the first ones had like twenty thirty minutes a piece. In the end, it was like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one. We kept it nice and tight, yeah. like a yeah. mouse's anus. <laughs> like a man's Sorry. <laughs> How does he know? Well, make of that what you will. There's a town called Mausel. Have you heard of this place? Where's that? Nah. And it's 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 it. I don't know. It's in some some carroty place, like Cor- uh, Cornwall or somewhere, or I don't know, Clyde <laughs> Bank. Carrot and it's got all opinions. Uh, Hang on, well, you need to say straight away before all we start this episode. All, <laughs> all opinions are the sole property of whoever said them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Dan was saying to me that there's this town <laughs> called Mausel, right? And um, it's if you read it, it just says Mouse Hole. Own, own the name. Don't go Mausel. Just say, no, I live Mouse in Mouse Hole. hole. Yeah. That's what I'd say if I lived there. Yeah. There's a town <laughs> um, not too far. I don't think it's too far where I am called Shittington. <laughs> yes. I mean, see? Classic. If you go live there, you just yeah. got to fucking own it, haven't you? Yeah, turn into the skid. Yeah. yeah, you just got to aggressively stare at people like when they go, "Where do you live?" Oh, I live in Shittington, and then just Shittington. Then your yeah. eyes glaze over, like in that kind of like confrontational. Yeah. You want to say something? You want to say yeah, something? It could be worse. Like living Margate. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Disclaimer: All opinions that are said on the show are Vince's only. Yes, yes. <laughs> he writes the script and makes us say them. Yes, all your, all your base belong to us. Anyway, so this, this episode, um, we're just going to talk about some comics that we've read over the years, some creators that, that we've enjoyed the work of, etc., etc. And, you know, there may be one particular title that we all love. Stands loved, out. That, that stood out. We've got a chance. Yeah. Yep. Um, that, you it's know, we, we not just... books that necessarily came out this year. We discovered yeah, them yeah, as individuals this yeah. year. That's what. That's one thing about this show. Like this, this show is all about the discovery of books. Hopefully, you know, small no, press and um, and sometimes I discover a book that is like years old. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, just, well, you just bought a load of Marvel masterworks, so you're about to discover a load of really old. Yes, stuff. I do. Mm. And and shout out first to the, that comic smell. Actually, um, yeah. I don't know how long this sale is going on for. 
I don't know how long the Comixology sells. There is a no, sale on Comixology on Marvel Masterworks at the moment. Um, I mean, I don't own it. I know Tony um, owns a load of the printed ones, and I just went on and I bought bought a few. They're 79p each. At the oh, moment, with digital comics, when they say there's a sale, you look at it, and it just means they're kind of a sensible price or a normal yeah. price, Yeah, um, yeah. which is kind of... Put me, you know, I like a stupid sale. Do you know what I mean? They're not <laughs> yeah, all seventy nine so pence. Oh, there's a few volume ones that are seventy nine pence. I think the rest are like one pound fifty nine. So I mean, it's still great it's... for a book that's going to cost you yeah. thirty five quid yeah. to buy in real life. You know, so. that's a real money spinner for Marvel because yeah. fucking people are snapping them up at that price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If people anything this year, yeah, yeah, it's shown us is people going back to the older stuff. Yeah, I can and, guarantee uh, you as well. I mean, I've bought a few with the intent to read over Christmas. You know, basically, you know, just chilling out, just go read some old classics or comics. Yeah. And um, won't be the same because it'll be digital. Do you know what I mean? It won't be the same yeah. as that, the wonderful sort of the printed paper, of course. But I can guarantee you I've bought more uh, titles than I'm going to read. I'm not going to read all of them. Yeah, I probably there's, there's some that will be in my collection, the digital collection, that is, for a long time before I read them. Um so Someone just, might never read. It's like yeah, comics, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's like comics yeah. I own. I've never read. There's a few things from the 80s I've still not read. I've owned since then. Yeah. I've yeah. got that Matt Fraction Hawkeye run on Comicsology, and I've not read that. Oh, God. Yeah, because that was in a crazy sale, wasn't it? That was, yeah. yeah it was I've got the whole run for virtually yeah. nothing. Yeah. It all always pays attention. Well, you're, it always um, is good to pay attention to when these sales sort of happen. And, keep, you know, because. And shout out to anyone who lets people know about them. Because... Yeah, if you do see one of those sales, do let us know. Like that Zavi one months ago. Do you remember that? Yeah, a lot, lot of people. Oh, yeah. Took, oh, yeah, a lot of people took advantage of that as well. Yeah. Ah. <clears throat> oh, I've Good. got some bucks fizz on the go. You know? That? Is that what that is? Yeah. Ah. Oh, no. You're drinking it out. They're bringing it out of a bit of a, a dodgy glass on you. If that's bucks fizz. What I've got? I look. I've got a Stella Artois you got like glass. A I hate. I yeah. hate Stella Artois. But I've got some lovely. Um, <laughs> well. Uh, the chalice what fuck pretentious I uh, quite like drinking a <laughs> snowball at Christmas just add the car lemonade with a glass of cherry in check who, it out who, it's nice who, 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 sorry who's this hang on hang, who's what, on what, the line that, uh, what have you done with Dan <laughs> Dan there where's Dan, it's, it's Dan. I think you shot a lime in it as well no I one year I went round to my folks house and uh I didn't have anything in the in the morning for breakfast I thought I'm gonna have a great Christmas dinner and I had Three massive glasses of that, and I was like, the room was fucking spinning. I was like, all right, <laughs> calm down. I've loaded that up too heavy. This, <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, not not one you have down the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For but, glass, but, I'm secure my masculine. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't yeah. think Gary the Builder is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I tell you what though. Here, here's an interesting sort of uh, a Christmas question, as it were, for all our lovely listeners. Because obviously you're gonna, you're gonna. I think everyone's probably looking forward to setting aside, like an evening or something. You know, to sit down, in a cosy chair and just read some comics. I think that's across the board. There's gonna be some point where we're all looking yeah. forward to doing that, aren't we? What is your drink of choice when you sit down to do that? It doesn't have to be alcoholic. Could be whatever. You know, what is your setup? And you know, well, mine's a bit of a weird one. I like ginger ale. Oh, ginger oh nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah I like ginger ale. Good. And, uh, nice. Yeah. There you go. Well, uh, this Christmas Eve, I'll be uh, having a couple of cups of tea and working my way through the uh, planetary on the Oh, nice. Good shout, the, man. Yeah. The, the, the Tony got me. So nice. That's my Christmas Eve sorted. Yes. And, I, and I've got a doomsday clock to get my hands into. <laughs> that, yeah. I said clock. Clock. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, anyway, speaking of clocks, yes, Dan. Comic House. <laughs> oh dear. Next year, Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna tra- train you in the segways, dude. That's I'm how gonna, it works, isn't it? You know, we'll yeah, just go back to sports. No, you got to tie it in a little bit, you know, to the about comics. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, speaking of comics. Comic yeah, anyway, uh, yes, thank you to Comic House, our sponsor. They always stick with us, God bless them. Um, they are an indie comic marketplace from the UK, but they support the indie scene massively. Um, we live them. Oh, live them? I live with them. No, I don't. Um, we wear love their them. Clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Live, love, laugh. Live, love, laugh. <laughs> 
Oh God, it's it's gonna be a good one tonight. I just know it. But you're uh, on yeah. the piss as well. This is gonna get worse. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Bucks Fizz, man. Jesus Christ, I need to drink four tons of this. Oh right, hardcore. No, yeah. Harry Harry hardcore. Yeah, well that's that's me. There's probably a comic called Harry Hardcore on Comic House. Well, it probably will be soon. Because there's a huge selection of titles on the Comic House database. If you yourself self-publish, you can list your book on there for free. And just then you've got another avenue to start selling your book straight away, which is always good. And they also have an, an amazing digital app, which hopefully a lot of you people will be using over the Christmas period to catch up on your small press and indie. Because that's all Comic House is. It's just absolutely yep. Stock to the rafters with amazing indie books. Um What's on there at the moment, Dan? We've got uh, Space Precinct Zero, Issue 2, Grey, Issue 2, Wall Breakers, Volume 1, Issue 1, The Epics of Echidnu, Volume 1, and March of the Robots, Christmas All Over Again. And many more. And... I've got my royalty check this week. Yeah, hey, me too. As well. yeah. yeah, And it, it really does. It, it benefits all small press creators, especially now when, um, you know, at the moment there's no conventions, etc., um, there will be eyes on your work, you know, it, because as soon as you start putting stuff on onto this app and on the Comic House, people want to check out new titles all the time. And this is a subscription service, only three pounds a month, um, which is cheaper than an average digital issue. That's madness. Okay. So, um, three pounds a month, you get access to the, an enormous library COVID, of digi- digital indie comics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just been added to all the time because especially over the past few months we've totally noticed like volumes of stuff has gone on yeah like people have really been adding like just say they've had 20 issues of their their comic and now they're sort of drip feeding that onto comic house aren't they really which is always good because if you add your comic on there there's a good chance you're getting the top 10 and people i've uh, got to give a shout out to pete because today on the comic house facebook page uh, someone said, oh, I've got a comic I can give away for free. Would anyone want to read it? And Pete said, well, why don't you just pop it on the Comic House app? And they were, they were like, what's that? I was like, <laughs> you're posting on the fucking comic book, uh, Comic oh, House oh. Facebook page. Oh. So we do, uh, well we do done, occasionally Pete. get that on our page. So when somebody p- tries to post a Kickstarter link and I say to them, oh, hi, yeah, we don't allow Kickstarter links. Are you a listener? And they go, of what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like that random... Astroturfing of shit, isn't it? That yeah. yeah. I guess with hey. or, with the Awesome Comics Talk group, we don't exactly have the podcast name front and centre, do we? Really? But that's because I mean, every it's not, it's not that page. It's not that kind of page, is, is it? I mean, yeah. every tenth. But to post get is. in this week's episode, you, yeah, yeah. To get in, you've got to answer a question. Do you mm. listen to the podcast? Yeah. Well, I've noticed the way people have been getting around that is by deleting the questions. Oh, you can delete okay. them. Yeah, and I've had a few recently that have done that. And then they've purposely deleted the last one. It says we're not for sales, you know, just for conversation. And they delete that one. And I, I, I felt what? a weak moment this week. I let a couple in, and one and both of them tried to then post their Kickstarter links. So that I couldn't then go back to them and say, didn't you read the questions? Kick oh, them I didn't out. see that question. Kick yeah, them out. I did. I kicked, Sim- I kicked one Just block and kick. S- s- simple as that. Because we don't want our wonderful community having to no. deal with that nonsense. Um, you have to kind of look after it and kind of cultivate mm. it because if you just let anyone post any old shit, it will just go down the fucking drain. You see that with a lot of pages, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. everyone yeah. posts everything and it becomes awful. It, do, it doesn't take much for it to just be filled with any old shit, much like a, a like a sponsorship ad. Um, so thank you Sorry. very much to uh, <laughs> Comic House. That is, is how you segue. Yeah, go to comichouse.com to find out about the 14 day free trial and seriously folks in the new year sign up if, you know if you if you haven't heard of the app if you don't know about it then you have an awful lot of fantastic comics ahead of you and what better way to start the new year yeah. that's what we're going to say so well, thank you again to Comic House all, all our comics are on there lots of our listeners comics are on there there's a whole selection of different genres age ranges you've got the kids section get them stuck into that over the Christmas break <clears throat> it's all on there good Nice. Right then, on to the um, the feature of the week, I guess we can call oh. it. Is it a feature? Oh. We'll be calling yeah. this? The yes. feature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that like that. You make it sound oh, sordid. Lord Fondleroy with your features. <sighs> I'm, look, yes. I'm, look, next year's going to be different, Tony. You're going to have to stop bullying me. So, <laughs> you bully me. No, I don't. <laughs> you do. No, I do. how do I bully Shut you? Shut up, you do. Or it all comes it. out. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is it. 
<laughs> it was good while it lasted. Yeah. So we picked between us five topics. How come Dan's been the sensible one this week, Vince? I know. Occasionally he jumps yeah. in and like gets us back on the track, and I'm like, "Where's this coming?" Yeah, from? sometimes when it's <laughs> when it's when the two adults are fighting at the front and the car's about to go over the cliff, <laughs> I leap into the front and pull the wheel. <laughs> I just, I'm just pleased you referred to me as an adult. It's the first yeah, time I've ever said that. Yeah, bloody hell. What a year. What a year. <laughs> go, on, go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, yeah so Sorry. so basically, it's our favourite comics. Well, our favourite choices of the year. So we've got a few yeah. topics. Um, Tony, if you want to tell us the topics at, in order, and then we'll then we'll just kick off from, from there, shall we? So first one up is graphic novel. So we're going to do graphic novel to start with. Uh, who would like to go first? I'll happily go first. Okay, D-Man. Mine's, uh, I discovered it mid part of the year on, I think it was on a comic message like forum board and I saw this kind of couple of pages from it and I was fucking dying, absolutely laughing and I tracked it down and it's Mega Hex by Simon Hanselman uh, yeah. which is about uh, a sort of adult twisted version of Meg Mogan Owl from the famous uh, kids books and the kind of drug druggy alcohol based lifestyle they're complete degenerates who just absolutely bully owl and it's just absolutely nuts it's, it's really funny and i've taken to following simon on uh, instagram where he posts up uh, i think it's weekly like free updates for the comic okay and it's all set in uh lockdown and how they're dealing with lockdown and as you can imagine they're terrible they're all ter- really terrible people narcissistic <laughs> hateful towards each other and, uh, so it's basically uh, Twitter then, yeah? Pretty much, yeah. It's like yeah. the modification. <laughs> the, the one that really made me laugh, and I think, I've talked about it many times on the show, and I think I posted it up in the group, but uh, Al passes out and they strip him naked and then uh, take him to like a drive through restaurant, order a load of food, and like push him past the service window, like totally naked, and the woman sort of looks out and there's like a close-up of his knob as he kind of like goes past the, <laughs> the window <laughs> in the shopping trolley. Then it veers into the road and he crashes out and then the police come and arrest him. And it's just, I was fucking dying, absolutely rolling up. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've got to try and get myself some more books from the series because I really enjoyed them. <clears throat> nice so, one. Nice and quick, that was mine. Cool, Vincenzo. Um, my choice goes all the way back to the very start of the year. Um, and it, it just goes to show that, like, you know, going through... Like past episodes or things that we've read or things like that, you just sometimes you you lose track of what came out at what time. Does that make yeah. sense? Definitely, oh, big stuff time thought, this year. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was, was that this year. I thought, and I was like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a crazy time, but thankfully, 2020, although it, it took a turn, it started off amazingly well with uh, one of the latest books from John Tucker, uh, our favorite, The King. Yes, um, this is a good. One. This, yep. Yeah. Um, this one, which is, um, I mean, it's got some critic called Tony Esmond uh, as one of the uh, testimonials on the page. Oh, on the back is it? Oh, I, I forgot I did yeah. that. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, for those for those that don't know, I mean, this is only, I mean, it's cheap as chips. It's three pounds um, is all it costs. I mean, did, he didn't do a Kickstarter for this, did he? I think he's no. Uh, no, I think it was Murder. He did the Kickstarter, yeah. for, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but th- this was is basically. It's once again in John's wonderful sort of um, from the narrator's perspective, isn't it? Idiosyncratic, I believe, is the phrase yeah. there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, I should uh. know what that word means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but... it doesn't mean from the narrator. It just means it of his own style, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, and it's in that sort of trademark style. But what I love about this, and it's a story that basically, um, in her renegade sister's will, Lisa is bequeathed a large egg. Upon falling into Lisa's possession, the egg hatches after nearly 50 years of dormancy. And The King is Lisa's memoir of her time with the egg and the years following her sister's passing. Um, it's 44 pages, A5, um, black and white with some gold highlights and stuff. Um, John's artwork is always it's always perfect for everything he does. I know that sounds crazy when you're talking about a, a, an artist doing their own artwork. Ad, you know, writing and creating their own stuff, but it's just, I mean that that John's style is so in sync with the humour and everything. Um, it just works brilliantly well. But it, this book also does a, a wonderful thing that humour does very well. It's very layered, and it's also it's quite poignant 
um, there's a certain sadness to, to the tale as well because it is obviously um, during someone passing, you know, in, in inheriting something. A lot, and of course, most of the most of the focus will be about what the the that is inside the egg, um, which is a. Do you, we can say it now, can't we? Yeah, I think so. The, the, the title kind of gives it away, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a it's a miniature Elvis, of course it is. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? You get you get a you get left an egg in a will, and when it hatches, um, a small Elvis Presley comes out. That's standard. Yeah, it's just standard. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Um, so it has that wonderful sort of sense of the absurd, um, but also very well written. And what I like about this, I mean, that premise is absurd, but everything about it makes it feel real, which is weird. Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of, it's it's all about characters. And this immediately, I, I thought. Well, so no, I mean, we're big fans of John's work anyway, and we'll we'll pick up anything he does. This is one of those. Oh, this is his best thing yet. Of course, he's still he's still making things every other flipping week, as well as his Twitch stream and all his art and and everything. And a child. Yeah, and a child, yeah. which he did. Yeah, congratulations again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the King's just a. It's just a lovely book. It's just really nice, and it it was. I kind of thought it was last year. Do you know what I mean? Because cause time, time's been a weird thing this year. When I look back and thought, oh, the king was at the beginning of this year. It's got to be the king. Um, so there you go. That is that is my choice. Um, and, good stuff, man. Yeah, hopefully a lot of people will agree with me. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah, great choice. Yeah, good. Uh, mine is uh, Dragman, Stephen Appleby. So yeah. um, th- th- imagine this. It's the start of the year again. Seems to be a lot of good stuff came out at the start of the year. I've got another another choice in a minute, um, and I'm sitting there in my at my desk at Nobrow, trying not to avoid, uh, annoy people as I mostly do there. Um, and Sam sort of beckons me into an office, his office and says, "Read this." I haven't read it yet. I think he want me to read it and let me know. And I sat there um, for a good couple of hours and read it in one sitting, and it's um, it's great. It's uh, it's good to see it getting a load of awards, being nominated for a load of awards as it as it goes along. I think it's up for an award at Angoulême. I think it's up on the, oh, the, the list on Glen, which is rightfully so. So Stephen, um, who we've been in contact with, we've spoken to a couple of times, and we're trying to arrange him to come on, aren't we? I think um, when the book came out, he was quite keen to do a face-to-face interview, but of course COVID happened, so we didn't get him on the end. So I'm hoping we'll get him on soon. It tells the story of... It's 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 not autobiographical, but there's elements of um, autobiography in it. Um, it tells the story of August Crimp, who is... Um, so it's kind of a story of transvestism combined with being a superhero um so there's an element of an origin story if you looked at you could read it in one way and just think it's an origin story of a superhero who when they dress up um get superpowers and kind of that's where it is but of course it's it's much more than that it's much more layered it's much there's much more going on in it um it's interesting it's quite touching at moments and it's done with that um really interesting style that Stephen Appleby has, which I think I thought I saw somebody refer to it as like a wibbly wobbly line. I think if you look at it, it's got that um, again. Let's use that word again, idiosyncratic style that um, is only his. It's, it's amazing. I really, really do enjoy his stuff. Um, and this is a hell of a book. It's a it's a big, thick brick of a book. Um, it's about the size of a, a book we're going to be talking about again later. But yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, I'd be interested to see where Stephen goes next with this. I know he did he did a thing with the lakes, didn't he? I think he did a little film with them on their con. I think he's a big fan of Swallows and Amazons, so they went out and visited okay. the for that and that sort of thing. But, yeah, a thoughtful person and a person who crosses, for me, crosses the line between indie creator, um, self-published, um, but also a sort of sweetheart of, you know, the Guardian Observer crowd as well. Um, occasionally they get it right but yeah it's well worth it's well worth your money you can get it digitally we got sent we also got sent a um a digital file of it by Stephen, just so i could use it in the review um and after writing the review we sort of struck up a friendship so it's, it's nice to see oh, good nice stuff one. that's my one yeah good nice um, so now before we're we go do on the, to, yeah before yeah. we go on to the next uh topic um we're just gonna have a sort of mini shout out in, in, in a kind of way um because those that don't know all through december We've been uh, sort of doing a charity drive um, for Cancer Research UK and, you know, what other charities if you want to donate to them. Um, and basically, some some people get some shout-outs, aren't they, Tony? 
yeah so the people a lot of people who donated got one of the sort of reward tiers as they are um you might hear an interview later on with, with someone else but these are the people who just that donated enough and said oh no just give us a shout out on the podcast that's fine so i'm just going to read out a few and we're going to take a little commercial break between um between sections of our best of just to talk about a few of them yeah. so eamon clark our pal eamon if you want some 2000 ad related goodness in your podcast head over to mcbc podcast and follow those links and you'll find his podcast always good um we're friends with him he's, he's a good egg um Damien and Helena over at Art92. Head, o- head over to Art92, so A-R-T-N-I-N-E-T-W-O.com for all your comics and art needs. Um, some great how-to videos that Helena's put together. I'll be looking at over the holidays, trying to mm. get my art around to it. Um, I was on Damien's podcast just yesterday, oh, and it got released. I saw today. that pop up, yeah. yeah, yeah I was like, oh, yeah. I get that quiet. It was mostly just, to be fair, it was just a sort of a quick, a quick are you you're available tomorrow kind of thing, and we had a good chat. It was, it was funny. Um Bryony Evans. Now, Bryony's the kind of friend you want, I think, because she said, yeah. can you promote Scare- Claire Spiller's comic, Rays, which I know both. I, r- I wrote a review of, and I think, Vince, you did like a, a verbal recommend, didn't you, on the yeah, pod? We, yeah, we recommended it on the pod, yeah. Yeah, environmental mini comic. Go to, so Bryony's basically given a donation to promote her friend's comic. There you go. That's the sort of friend you want, isn't Rolledge. it? Yeah, mm-hmm. good old. Art of Claire Spiller.etsy.com will get you. So it's Claire, C L A I R E. Art of Claire Spiller at Etsy.com will get you the comic. And if you go for a portfolio, you can go to Claire Spiller.co.uk mm. and see Claire's work there. We, we love I, Claire's I will, work. I will, uh, yeah, I will say I'm, I'm glad uh, that shout out got in because uh, Ray's was uh, something I was going to shout out as well. Oh, good stuff. Mm. Good stuff, mm. man. Yeah. Um, John Tucker, who just got a shout at John Tucker Art or twitch.tv forward slash John Tucker Art. If you're for all your craziness, go over there and you can get. Are we ready? You can also watch Cliff Cumber be a moderator. Hooray. Gee, Cliff. Um, yeah, so John, <laughs> John's a friend of ours. We love John's stuff, as you probably just heard. And the final one for this section is Matt Bunce, who's also um, a bit active on the boards, uh, on the Facebook group, friend of ours. And we've, he and I often DM about stuff. He's doing this sort of fake facts over Instagram. Imagino <laughs> facts. I-M-A-G-I-N-O facts. Imagino facts. And he posts one a week, and it's they're sort of just made up facts really it's quite funny it's worth looking at and he's just getting his sort of he's getting his art art style into line for that and it's really beginning to look good so head over and have a look at that one good there you go amazing nice amazing yeah. so there you go more of them to come um okay. okay what's the next one next one is comic series should we go the same same order yeah Lewis sounds... first. Dan, no, you first. <laughs> yeah. yeah my comic series uh first issue of which popped up earlier this year and i'm sure you guys uh, are gonna love it or ha- did love it uh, is nocturnal commissions oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good stuff i love yeah. this title i really kind of count the days till uh jason mcnamara puts out a second one uh it's art by greg hinkle uh colored by greg hinkle uh with paul john little and basically greg hinkle does absolutely everything else the letter in the cover and uh it and tells us greg, th- how is greg not on a marvel or dc book now i don't know he's amazing he really he's is so since so airboy good. you know yeah was so good yeah. I could talk about Airboy all day. That's such yeah. a fantastic book. Yeah. Uh, essentially, it's a wolf man, a vampire, and a zombie. Uh, come, it's like the the origin story of them coming together to to form a kind of a detective agency of sorts. Is that right? I'm That's sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and a zombie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just the the art choices, the writing, it's just absolutely spot on. Hilarious, funny, poignant. It's there's yeah. some great, there's some great writing in that as well, man. Yeah, Jason great Kills. one-liners. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the the vampire character, I forget the name, is just a standout one for me. Um, mm. it, it's the fact that you kind of got the Wolfman, who's kind of like a bit grungy and dirty, and then the vampire, who's kind of quite stiff up a lip and refined. Uh, he's created a good set of characters to kind of bounce off one another. And the the zombie is like a punk, isn't he? That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, isn't he a band or something? A band, didn't he? He was in yeah, a band, yeah. and he just took so much shit that. It, he ended up becoming uh, a zombie, <laughs> as far as I can recall. And uh, he, he's sort of the, the main antagonist in the first one, but then it turns out not to be. He's and then now one of them, and it, it's all good. Mm. Yeah, so uh, highly recommended. I can't wait to see the, uh, more of it. Yeah, good I stuff. I can't wait for more of this. Yeah. Um, okay, then mine. I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna do a, a cheeky honourable mention first. Um, because I wanted okay. to, um, my main pick is is a new type, a newish title. I get you know, it's not what you think. But the honourable mention um, is Outer Darkness. Uh, 
Yeah, mine was that one of them mentioned that. that oh, I've, not, I've not heard of that book. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone who's listening to the show know that I absolutely adored that book. It was amazing, and the reason it's an honourable mention. I mean, that was just going to be my flat sort of pick, but unfortunately, it, it sort of finished this year, which was which was gutting. It finished after the Out of Darkness two crossover, which was very good as well. Um, but you got me into that, and then I yeah. got two other people into it. Yeah, and it's so good, and it's it's so sad that it's, it's not. Someone was really annoyed that yeah. it stopped. I yeah. just got me into it when when so many other comics that have just keep going and they've got yeah, less and this, this one has so yeah. much potential it's just <clears throat> anyway anyway people but, are stupid yeah they are yeah. Indeed, they are indeed but yeah. outer darkness is a brilliant series so just get the book just get the books anyway because you will enjoy them but um my actual main pick uh, for my face series is one that i discovered on this show um it's one that i didn't know about until uh, tony esmond recommended oh issue one. Mm, there you go um, and it's let's all die, yay! Oh yeah, good stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, Isn't yeah. We, yeah. Next issue should be out anytime soon. Must be anytime soon, I think. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, because there's three issues out so far. Um, I've been getting them. Is that going to be the final one? The next one is that right? I think issue four. I think must it might be. be. Yeah, it's building yeah. up. Building up. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's not and, many people left. No. No. Yeah. No, yeah. Th- yeah. This. This is. Um, it's a classic. It's a slasher. In a in a camp, you know, Camp Silver Skies, you know, oh, we've seen that before, you know, Nightmare, uh, not Nightmare, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, you know, Jason Voorhees. This one's a bit different, and it's because the characters know that there's some sort of serial killer that is apparently supposed to be stalking the camp, and they all go there anyway because they all want to die, because this is a they 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 meet up as part of a suicide. Um, therapy group don't they yeah and um yeah away from the group they all decide yeah let's go we, we don't want to take our own lives but we can get around it which is a twisted logic um but we can get around it if someone else takes our life um that immediately is like oh that's a bit different yeah um, definitely but what i like about this book especially like about this book that isn't just a cheap pop this is a very well written book about people and characters and there's there's lots of i mean i'm gonna say layers again there is lots of layers to you know good horror um characters and stories you know a lot of the times when you read a lot of horror books as well especially in this sort of genre the slasher genre they just meet for the grinder characters and you there's not a when you read those sort of stories there's no sense of oh who's going to go next because let's face it you don't really care you know they're all going to go at some point but this book is is very much I genuinely don't know who's going to go and when and when it's happened and how it's happened um, because it's known that the glory in a horror film is how the kills happen do you know what I mean and there's yeah. some really good ones one of the ones that I think it's the end of issue two was pretty shocking brutal and ingenious in a kind of way um it would be nightmarish what happens to this character um but at the same time it's written there's a there's a very dark sense of humor going through it um it's not i don't get the feeling that it's it's sort of grim and nihilistic which books like this probably could have been and that that helps because and i'll the the people that create their course written by sean gabarin um, art by Michaela De Sacco, coloured by Jan Perillet. I hope I got that right. The art does, a, I mean, talked about the story in the writing, but the art does such a great job of elevating it. And like a lot of horror books, we we talked about it before, go really dark and grim, and you know, obviously there's nasty things happening, but there's a there's a real cleanness to the line. Um, it's important, I think, with this sort of, especially this subgenre of the mm. slasher movie it's important to be able to work out who everyone is without yeah you know squinting and yeah. because it's all about the personalities isn't it it's all about the yeah. characters yeah. and you need to be invested in them before they get killed yeah. in somewhere or other and it, it perfectly does that but it does it without making it photo yeah. referency which yeah. i really yeah. liked yeah. yeah yeah um yeah and you really do get a feel for the the characters themselves and uh, another part of the story as well, because obviously you, you just think, oh, these people are going; they want to die anyway, so who cares? 
Well, someone turns up. Someone's car breaks down near the camp. And all of a sudden, this is a person that probably doesn't want to die, which changes yeah. up the game. But but there's but then questions. again, is it? That's the thing. It's yeah, weird, isn't it? There's lots You're of media that yeah, yeah, become suspicious, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there's twists, there's turns. There's a real uh, cabin in the woods, knowing sense of the genre, paying respects and doing its own thing at the same time. And, and let's all die. I think is it? It's great. But I mean, I, I actually don't like Cabin in the Woods as a movie because I find it too too knowing too winky okay. mm. you know what I mean it starts mm. off okay and if it carried on like that would be fine but it becomes a bit I don't I know love this, it when this... it, I love it when it goes mental that film but, but that's um... the point of it do you know what I mean yeah. that's the yeah. point of it I think yeah. but the this is this is much more based this is much more grounded I think yeah, yeah. Uh, and also really you've got like. that real sense I mean you know looking forward to issue 4 and seeing how this plays out but yeah, the, the, he's a good writer, that Sean. Yeah, we must get him on. I know we spoke to him quite a few times. Yeah, we? we're yeah. sort of arranging it, but um, yeah, he's he's a great writer. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know where it's going. That's no, why no, I'm exactly enjoying that. so much. Yeah. I have no idea where the, the full fish is going. Yeah, and it's got another sense sense of like, yeah, we've got all of these things that are like turning the genre on its head and the story and you know characters and things, but the, you know, the Jason Voorhees of the story is that. Do you know what hmm. I mean? Is is that force of nature that when they turn up, they just want to do one thing. And they do. It's it. a who done it as well. Yeah, it's yeah. it's Scooby Doo. Yeah, it basically yeah. is it's Scooby Doo with a uh, an adult aesthetic, isn't it? Yeah, in a yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's just very good, and, and yeah, I just, I just absolutely loved it, and like, yeah, and um, I mean, it's as soon as it, I find there's an issue, open it, read it, cover to cover, done. Do you know what I mean? There, there's no ifs and oh, I'll read that later. Um, yeah, no, yeah, that has to be read and consumed immediately. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think it's also re-readable as well. So, you know. I'd definitely get this in trade when it yeah. comes out. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it will be in trade, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of these books aren't even making physical, you know, some books. Yeah. yeah. I think the way this is gonna go with like it's gonna be trades of stuff that's done well. We we're gonna talk roughly yeah. at the end of the show about yeah. what we can see coming up. But yeah, yeah. and what we hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um let's all die, that's my pick. Thank you for Tony for bringing it to my attention. Thank oh. you to the creators for creating it because I'm absolutely loving it. So. Good stuff. Uh, on to me. Um, back to me again, obviously. Uh, I've got two worthy mentions. Um, well, one. Let's say one worthy mention. I found this really difficult. This guy's. You know what I'm like. I. Mm. Uh, I literally was going to bed, confused and thinking. Hopefully, I'll sleep on it and I'll, I'll wake up. And I wake up thinking, no, it's got to be this one. Then halfway through the day, I'll go, nah, it's got to be that one. And I was between two for this one. So I was between. The honourable mention goes to Savage Dragon. Um, hey. like like you just said Vince the book that I always read immediately mm. um, I double dip on it because it takes so long for get my comics to send me with the bloody comics that it's been on Comixology and I just read it on there so I actually pay for it twice like the total comics mug that I am <laughs> um, but it's been great it's it's a book you can jump in it's a book that knows what it's doing it's sexy, it's funny, it's action packed it's scary it's tense. It's just everything. It's it's everything. If you had to buy one comic ever, this would be the one you could buy every month and just get enough of a bite out of it, you know. But the comic series I went for um, was The Department of Truth. So right. written by James Tinney and the Fourth, art by our friend Martin Simmons, yeah. uh, lettered by editor Bidikar, designed by Dylan Todd, edited by Steve Fox. A book that is about. I mean, it's a book that could have come out in any decade. It it's, it could have come out during the, the X-Files boom. It could have come out before that when uh, Sinkovich was big. You know, it could have come out in the 60s. It's it, it's from a theme. It's, it's basically paranoia around conspiracy theories and those people who know and those people who don't and those people who control them and those people who don't. Uh, but it's deeper than that. There's a, there's a much bigger depth to it with, with, with uh, a narrative that, surrounds a, a new recruit um it's so full of spoilers i can't really the end of issue one is a big spoiler and it only only gets worse as you go it gets better as you go through um and it's a it's a book about the nature of ideas it's a book about the nature of theories and what we believe in and what it, what we believe in is real and what we believe in isn't real and if there was ever a time of conspiracy theories it's now isn't it god yeah the, the anti-vaxxers and the QAnons and all these sort of weird things going on in the world. It's definitely now that it just echoes so much. Um, I've every every time I read it, I think 
what is Martin doing? Oh my God, this is amazing. And I want to post a page of it on Twitter or on Instagram or something. And I think I can't because it's contained spoilers, but he is playing with the medium and this is the best I've ever seen him. Um, He's freer. There's a, there's a, there's a, a different quality of line than we got from punk's not dead. Although I did like punk's not dead. This is seems to be for a bit more John J. Muth. Um, I think I compared it to, um, to him and he said, Oh, that's a, that's really nice. Cause he, that's a, he's a big fan of his there's um, it's creepy and tense and mysterious. And some of the images will give you nightmares. Some of the images look like they're scrawled on a blackboard. Some of the images are just beautiful images of sun, sun bleached LA streets and cars and um, incredible stuff. He, he throws in, there's a collage. It looks like a collage element to it. I'm sure he does it all digitally, but there's like little flags thrown in. There's extra images and repeated images. And Tinian knows what he's doing around the writing. The first, I think I said when I, I reviewed the first issue, I think I might have been February or something like that. I said, this is going to be my book of the year. And it still is. It's still really good. Mm. Um, I know Martin put the pages online for um, for sale. And I think they went within like 10 minutes. Whoa. And all due respect, they were not cheap. And neither should they be. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think um, Sarah got a page. I think she'd been promised a page and she'd paid for it early or something like that, I think. And um, it's amazing. Just it's totally beautiful. If you're into that sort of thing, if you're into the Sienkiewicz and John J. Moves and these sort of people, you'll you'll love it. And uh, if you're into v- good vertigo, you'll love it. Um, yeah, just absolutely brilliant. I think there's a scream at the end of issue three which is comparable to the scream at the end of uh, Twin Peaks. It just, uh, wow, okay, here we go. Yeah, and it seems, to be, it seems to be rolling. I think he posted an image from issue six, I think, this mm. earlier today on his um, on his Twitter. But, yeah, yeah, it's great to see mine. And we've known mine for years since we started the show, yeah. really. Yeah. And it's yeah, great good to see you. him. Yeah, super well. nice, super nice guy. Always, yeah. always awesome hanging out with him at conventions and stuff. And it just, yeah. yeah. And that, I remember he did that... Um, Jessica Jones pay you know covers didn't he? We think wow, yeah. this, is, and this is again even better. I think yeah, yeah I remember bumping into Shelley Bond. Uh, it's a story I've told a couple of times. Bumped into Shelley Bond. I was with you, Dan. I think I bumped into Shelley Bond at Elberto, and she said yeah. he was the next Sinkovich. And I think I think she's right. I think she called it early there. Yeah, really good. Yeah, that's my uh, favourite series. There you go. Nice. There you go. So that's two down. Um, you know, I've yet to read that. <clears throat> no, I, man, I, yeah. I've heard nothing. I've heard it's nothing but amazing things about that. So yeah. that's on the wish list for next year. Yeah. Um, but before we get on to the next section, Tony. So uh, Ian Ashcroft, Ian donated a page. It was quickly snapped up within five minutes. Um, Ian Ash, Ian dot Ashcroft dot art on Instagram, and you can also find his work artstation dot com forward slash Ian Ashcroft twenty eighteen. Obviously, we know Ian because um, he was on. You worked with him on Space Warp, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so he's very good. I I wrote a short for a little little heroes anthology last year, I think it was with him, and um, he's another dude. Five minutes from being he's the man of a hundred styles. Yeah, Yeah, he's great. I saw him. Wow, he can work in that style, and then see another one. It's like wow, that's amazing. Look at that. It's completely different to the last one, but just as good. Yeah, he's good egg. Yeah, yeah. and he's uh, he's he's one of those guys who doesn't shout about his work enough. I think I think he needs us to shout about it a bit more because it's um, it's really good. And um, I know that Pat was chuffed chuffed as f to work with him. Um, Nick Bryan. Nick Bryan is a buddy of ours. I think the last time I saw him was at the Hackney Zine Fair. But if you go to Nick Bryan, N I C K, then B R Y A N, nickbryan.com, you can uh, read some of his. He's got some free comics to read on there. And he's on Twitter. He is at Nick MB. Uh, he's a buddy of ours. He's been on our yeah. radar for a couple of years now. And he's yeah. sort of yeah. chatted about books of his for a while. Yeah, we spoke, we spoke to him at uh, Thought Bubble as well. That's right. Yeah, of course we did. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the Lakes podcast what, coming next week. Watch this space. <laughs> I've just messaged yeah. them. Um, Ian, Nicky, Mike, Pete, and Tom. Always a favourite podcast of mine to listen to. Thanks for donating, donating folks. and looking forward to uh, um, the, the quiz next week. Um, and how could we forget Mr. Curry, Tom Curry? Oh, what a dude. Hey. It, this time he has actually paid us to give a Skelly Bob shout out. <laughs> so, you uh, so Skelly Bob, um, skellybob.com. And on Twitter, you can find at this chucklehead, the unofficial fourth member of the podcast and the, the, the chap who runs our drink and draws. So very cool. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. And one more, Gary Watson, another big pal of ours, another pal oh, we've been dude. friends with for years, seemingly. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these people I'm calling out here didn't want 
a shout out they just said oh and donated money but i said no you've mm. donated enough money you get a shout yeah. out. that's how it works yeah. uh comics anonymous.co.uk is a great review site by gary yeah. uh, we see we see gary and he's um he's always he's one of the few reviewers i'll read i'll be honest with you one yeah, of the few reviewers i trust definitely um, without a doubt yeah he gives he speaks his mind and that's what i want to hear uh, if you go to comics anon blog at comics Comic Anon blog on Twitter. You can find uh, him on there. Uh, yeah, always good. Comicsanonymous.co.uk for the reviews. There you go. That's the, that's that one. Nice. Good. Okay. The next one, Tony. Next one is writer. Okay. Okay. Uh, who's it first? D. Dan. Me. Yeah, I've gone for a lot of uh, small press on my list. I'm going to okay. first of give an honourable mention to uh, Tom Ward. <clears throat> Excuse me for his work on uh, Merrick. Uh, the news you landed on doorstep today, didn't it? I think. Yeah. It did indeed. Yeah. yeah I've yet to read uh, my issue, part two of Puppets. Tom just consistently smacks it out of the park with uh, Merrick. Just yeah. absolutely solid roller coaster ride of a story. I mean, I, th- I think we need to get him back. I mean, he was our first, first ever, of course you yeah, ever guest yeah, on yeah. the show. So we need to get him back on at some point because his journey has not stopped. Uh, and he's no. kept he's kept Luke is Luke Parker still on it? Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. That's it. a good little consistent run, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 I think uh it's one of the longer runs in a yeah, small press, I yeah. yeah. Knows how to do a Kickstarter. Yeah, just does the Kickstarter, you get your comic yeah. and re- wash and repeat. You know what I mean? It's great. But <clears throat> I'm gonna give mine uh this year to uh Gareth Hopkins. Oh good shout out. His yeah. work on yeah. the Petricor. Yeah, he's one of my uh, honourable mentions, actually. So yeah. I'll get him in now. Okay. So that was really the the thing of kind of like the the comic and making observations and stuff, and then there's a story that spins off uh, within Petricor, and it, it really kind of like touched me and sort of I, I I could understand it. It spoke to me when I read the work. I, I felt a connection to it, and. Uh, it was just really well done. And when you said your story, Tony, about it getting wet in the post and oh, yeah. Slightly, yeah, yeah. that's, that's what adds to it. It's yeah, like, it does. Yeah. It's a very personal yeah. thing. And I, I just feel like, uh, Gareth's work's coming on leaps and bounds. It's, uh, Absolutely. It, he's, yeah, There's he's such really a quality to it, isn't there? There's yeah. such a, uh, it evokes something you don't see anywhere else, which I like about it. Yeah. yeah. He's got that, uh, the eye for it of kind of like, noticing stuff like a good photographer can pick out a scene and frame it just right mm. gareth's got that skill uh as a writer and he's able to communicate those ideas and thoughts and feelings and it very much comes across in his work there's very much the life of the interior there isn't there? what he what he thinks you know he's he manages to translate what's going on on in a head in your yeah. brain onto a page which i, I always admire yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've had those thoughts too and uh there's times i put stuff on twitter and he likewise and it's like yeah that's pretty much what i'm thinking and going through with the kids yeah okay yeah, yeah. really really understand him so uh he's got a, a whole slew of work i think petrical might be available on the comic house app uh if not plenty of his other books are isn't so, petrical through good comics is that right yeah uh, Petrical Robbie. yeah yeah okay yeah because i picked up from them uh i think a car card of comic festival i think Com- comic okay Carnival. Yeah, yeah. You're a bit of a bitch. The old links in this one, uh, Vince. Yeah, that's, well, that's that's fine. That's why I'm writing down the names every time I. Hey. That that, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything though. This is a very unprofessional show. Exactly. Um, <laughs> um my, my my pick um is a writer that that came onto my radar this year, and I think um he's a writer that I think um. You need to keep an eye out for, I think, because oh, um, is that because he's dodgy or <laughs> no? He's not one of us. Okay. Right, um, no, just because um, so far everything I've read of his is, has been awesome. Uh, it's Brian Wickman, um, who um, I recommended a couple of times on on the show through. Um, he's, he's got like a free comic called Big White on his website, and okay. also he did Grit um, through Scout. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Um, now that is um, going to the trailer. That's going to be out. I think around I think Valentine's time. I think he, is what he said. Um, but yeah, just uh, both of both of his titles. Just immediately, I'm like, oh, this is I, I like this writing. You know, there's a real great sense of character um, without without 
hundreds and hundreds of paragraphs of white speech bubbles or you know without being too writerly do you know what i mean you know when some people get all authorly and you just think that you don't need to say that much in yep. order to get a character across i think brian's got a brilliant sense of um dialogue character and I, i'm just looking forward to the the ideas that he's that he's um, gonna do moving forward because um you know whether grip will have more issues or whatever the next uh, title is. I, I'm there for it, and like it was immediately sort of, yeah. I can't wait for that. You know, I, I read Big White, and then when I heard about Grit, um, it was immediately I'm looking forward to this book, which, which is always nice. But when it delivers, it's even nicer. So yeah, um, good stuff. Yeah, check out the books and uh, follow uh, at B M Wickman on on Twitter, and look forward to seeing what he's got next. So that's my one. Good stuff. Mine's um, nice. you know, mine's mine's quite mainstream, guys. Again, I'm afraid, but there's reasons a lot of these people are mainstream is because they're good at what they do. You know what I mean? So yeah, and a lot of, a lot of them have come up through the small press. But my um, my worthy mentions was going to be Gareth, uh, Pat Mills, obviously. Pat, Pat yes. gets a worthy mm. worthy mention every time, um, for especially for Space Wolf. And I don't know if you two have seen the Christmas 2000 AD. The Slain in it is fucking hell. Oh my god! Wait till you see Slain in 2000 <laughs> AD this week. Jesus Christ, it's good. Um, obviously, my, uh, another one, Bob Fingerman. Um, Dotty goes to head. Dotty's Inferno was brilliant, and also, uh, and also Jonathan Hickman. He's kind of last year was the hotness, wasn't he, with Hox Pox? Um, but um, X Men remains good. It remains a good title. I wasn't quite in love with X of Swords, but um, there's there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there for Hickman. But my my writer is Bendis, um, Brian Michael Bendis. Um, he moved over from Marvel to DC in quite a surprise move for me about yeah. um, got over a year ago now. Um, that and was I'd a always, big thing when it happened, wasn't it? It was mm. a huge thing. Yeah. And to me, it was almost indicative of the situation at Marvel. If there was, any, you know, if he was going to move, you know, he was he was their big gun, wasn't he, for so many years, mm. 20, for 20 years. I mean, I bought my son up on Ultimate Spider-Man. You know, we talked about it every time a trade came out. You know, it was like there was like ten trades that spanned you know the life of a certain period of my son growing up. But um, I do really like his writing. I find him personal. I think he a lot of people give him give him digs for you know writing too many stories about superheroes sitting around the TV chatting. But no, that's a, a little unfair. But he moved to um, DC and was given the Superman titles to take over. And I I'd, I'd lost the Superman that I had grown up with when the new 52 started i don't know if you remember it and grant morrison had him in a pair of old boots and jeans and like a tied round cape and it was all a bit style over content for me and the jrjr stuff was a bit at the time was a bit just too rambunctious and to me wasn't superman nice use of um, the word rambunctious thank you <laughs> uh, and uh and then and then we got jim lee giving superman some weird costume noodled armor and i thought well, this isn't him either um and it, I, I wasn't enjoying him for a while and 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 bendis brought back a bit of heart to him he he, he made he brought back the person i recognized as superman being mm. a, you know i was 10 years old when superman the movie came out and all this sort of thing and and i really i really felt for it and i i um i, I read the issues i get the issues um, on my pull list and i i I've, I've bought every single hardback that's come out ar- around his run including event leviathan um yeah, and I, th- I do. I do genuinely think he's he's brought him back to us, and I know he's sadly he's about to leave Superman and move over to the Justice League. I don't know if you saw the the teasers this week for the team. Yeah, I didn't yeah, see that. I saw, I saw a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it started coming out, so he's going to be going over there. Um, so other other event Leviathan, he brought back Legion superheroes. I'm a huge Legion fan. I talked about it on another podcast last week about I just I just want to talk about Legion for a whole episode. I just love them. I think they're a great idea. Teenagers in space, you know. Um, he did Young Justice, which I'm yet yet to to read, and Naomi, which I'm yet to read. But uh, my son reads Young Justice and says it's really good. So, yeah, I think Brian Bendis is he's a, he's a he's all about the writing. He's, he yeah. knows what he's doing. He's written books on how to write, and he knows how to do it. And uh, it's a shame his Avengers run and his Ultimate Spider Man and was just brilliant. I just loved them. And uh, he's over at DC now. And I, I'm I hope he's going to stay around in the mainstream for a while, and not disappear off into television or. Yeah, I don't suppose they, the money's in image anymore either, but is it? But yeah. I'm hoping he's going to stay around. The uh, a Superman thing popped up on my Facebook wall. The memories I shared it years ago, right? And it's from a cartoon, an animated one. And Clark and Lois have gone to see Ma and Pa Kent, and they're telling Lois about how when Kent Clark was little, they uh, used to wrap his presents in lead 
so he couldn't yeah. tell what it was. Well, there's hey, um, that's Clark the cover. Says, Clark says, uh, don't you mean Santa wrapped them? <laughs> <laughs> and that's Superman. Yeah, well, he got him. <laughs> well, that's I, I did. I did a I did a, a pod about the um, a DC superheroes Christmas special, and on the cover it's got Superman looking at a present that says lead on it. Yes. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good. It, there's I, I know it happened at the end of last year, but um, I spoke to Stuart Moraine. Moraine's like the hugest Superman fan, yeah. isn't he? And um, in it, spoilers for a comic over a year ago, but the Superman gives up his identity, gives up Clark Kent, and he tells the world. And it's pro- it's one of the best executed series of pages you'll see because it says it, there's very little writing and a lot of telling. It's mm. Beautiful, beautifully done. And the ramifications are still playing out now. And it's um, the DC universe where everyone knows who he is. Of course, you, he's got family. He's got Lois Lane he's married to. He's got kids. There's the Superman family of heroes. He's a Legion of superheroes. There's all this sort of stuff going on. And it's uh, clever, tight. And the last issue, will uh, it's got me waiting for the next issue every time, which I really That's like. That's it should be. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good. That's my one. Amazing. Cool. So, with another round down, Tony. So, uh, some more good eggs. Thank you, good egg people. You're now part of a, a, a club. So, Lucy Sullivan, one of our buddies, we did an interview with her for Thought Bubble. I did, didn't we? We yeah. did one for that. At Lucy Sullivan UK. Lucy Sullivan uk.com who has the most gorgeous art style that it, it, it looks utterly instinctual and just scratchy it's sensitivity and i just love the way she draws but she draws it in such a weird way we didn't realize did we till we saw a drawing mm. she sort of almost underdraws it sort of thing it's or through another through another piece of paper and stuff but yeah brilliant stuff love lucy stuff um rachel lee carter one of our best friends uh tiny noggin tiny noggin dot wordpress.com always putting out interesting stuff go and follow her on twitter she does zines and little stories and postcards and art and um what probably one of our most imaginatively kooky friends i hope she doesn't mind me saying that but she does she does some stuff that just really appeals to me the way she does it um alan purdy um who um you did you see his alan maury did on the drink and draw no did you see it yes then? yeah Oh my god my how cool god, is that yeah. <laughs> yeah so good so alan's good. great alan's a big comic um collector and reader and also an exceptional artist and you can follow him at alan purdy p-u-r-d-i-e at alan purdy on twitter uh charles raymond not so tiny dot co dot uk at not underscore so underscore tiny um another small press machine puts out small press chlorophyll still one of my the funniest books just love that sort of colour. He worked with me on the Hall Chronicles. Yeah, uh, another good egg. Uh, a couple more before we, we switch to the next thing. Uh, the Mighty Imber. Chris has donated a page still up on our Facebook for 40 quid. A page of Imber's work. Absolute steal. Yeah. And he, he will send it to you if you buy it. Just donate 40 quid to a charity and let us know and Chris will send it to you. I, I own a page of chris's art as well i love it absolutely beautiful piece of art but you can go uh, you can buy the last sheriff you can buy all of his work at recklesshero.com forward slash shop or follow them on follow the reckless heroes guys at, at reckless hero hq on twitter and the final one for this little section is sam brett so um sam is probably i don't think he's allowed to listen to us i don't think his dad allows us no, to listen to us, no but uh, <laughs> yeah so if he isn't blue. we want to say he's an absolute fucking legend yeah, this, fucking this legend, kid. Sam. Yeah, <laughs> um, he's doing some. He does um, the, the the art chops on that puts half the half the small press to shame. I've got to tell <laughs> yeah. you, yeah, on that kid. Uh, if you go to at sam underscore brett dot art on uh, Instagram, you can find his art, and he's a good kid. I can't, I can't he, wait till he starts making comics. Like, yeah, me too. Great. Yeah, and he's uh, he's a particularly a friend of mine because whenever I do Nottingham Comic Con, I make him carry heavy boxes. So that's good. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's uh, that's that little section over with. We've got a couple more left for the next one. Nice. Uh, okay. Next. Next is artist. Mm. Favorite artist of the mm. year. Mm. D man. Well, mine was uh, Sarah Gordon. Okay. Uh, yeah. She popped on an earlier show and talked about her books, and she she gave us all this uh, PDFs, and I was like, one of those things of going around to get them in proper hard hardback, but I've yet to do that, uh, much to my shame. But her work, just generally the whole book and. It's just fantastic, and her work kind of fits the subject matter so well. Yeah, it's hard to imagine having any other artist do the work on it. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's it's kind of the, the whole package as as a creator, 
and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Kind of uh, every yeah, every single one of her titles, yeah, it said something different, but they all had the same sort of. It's creepy and it's gothic creepy. and it's inky and yes. Yeah. It's... Um, I it's remember when we had her on like the show. I was, yeah, I, I was yeah. talking to her. There's, there's definitely a page or two of hers because I know she's got original artwork um, that I definitely want to get my hands on. So I need to talk to her about that. Actually. Check her about that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yes, Good Sarah choice. Gordon's fantastic work. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to have a couple of honourable mentions. Go on, mate. Yeah. Uh, Cliff Cumber for this. Ah, oh, mine. Yeah, yeah. Dynamite work. Just yeah. All year long. Uh, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, all, all the stuff he's doing is brilliant. And uh, Adam Phelps, Stuart Mulrain. Oh, come on, yeah. Both of those two guys have been putting in the hours and just getting better and improving every time. Like, you look at Adam's work from Atomic Hercules 1 to uh, Commando, and you could just... The, the, the improvements in them are just... Get, it's just you can see it in the lines, the, the, the sureness and the, mm. the confidence that's building. Uh, with Stuart again like just that constant drawing and keep on doing it and doing it and doing it and you will get better at it and mm. Stuart's work is, is proof of that it's coming on leaps and bounds and uh, well done for uh, dropping the weight Stuart you look great for it so, yeah it looks well sexy yeah. doesn't he mm. that's great <laughs> don't worry put it all on over Christmas but yeah, yeah don't worry <laughs> oh, yeah. tell me about it <laughs> okay um, my pick for my fave artist I've got a couple of honourable mentions as well but Favorites, are you online, guys, currently, as we're, as we're oh, talking? Yes, I have to be. Right. Talk to yes. you. Okay. Now, the artist I'm going to talk about, he, he's an artist, he's a graphic designer, illustrator, and stuff like that. Been a, an enormous fan of his work um, ever since discovering it. I've, and um, just, and I, I gushed about it when I talked about one of the books that he did the art for recently realm of the damned my pick my fave artist of the year is pi par so oh, if, yeah if you go to p y e p a double r dot com and then click on the gallery button um and you have your, you have to pick your socks up from the other side of the room because this dude is fucking amazing um he's i ha i very proudly have one of his prints um on a, on a wall at home which is lovely, and um, I've seen that there's. I'm not even a fan of Primus, but there's a Primus print that he's done that I need to have in a frame and on my wall. I absolutely love um, this guy's work. He's worked um, with 2000 AD, um, I think the magazine. He's done a done a strip called The Intestinauts, which I don't know if it's been if it's come out yet or whether it's too big. What in 2000 AD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, so. Um, and also he did the aforementioned Realm of the Damned, all three books, which was um, metal as fuck. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> I, fantastic, yeah. I, I've, yeah I've I remember thought... loving this after you mentioned him before, because I went away and tried to copy his style, didn't I, with uh, the sort of greys and reds he yeah. uses. I really like that. Yeah. yeah, and there's a real sense of uh, graphic design. I mean, on his page, he's also got some of his design work. is amazing anyway. But just straight-up comics, they're, the detail, um, whether it be the, you know, the, the figures have a cool sort of... Anim, almost an, not an anime quality, but you know there there is a comic book quality to the to the faces, you know. But the world and the detail, you know, whether it's cars, buildings, uh, you know, apocalyptic landscapes, fucking devilish trees, God knows what, or or giant monsters made out of a uh, rotten human flesh. Hey, dude can do it all, <laughs> and um, yeah, I, and he has been doing uh, a lot of um, sort of hot rod type cars and stuff like that just trying that sort of stuff out and that looks amazing as well fair play to anyone that can draw a car that actually looks like a car gotta say it now um i did murder road and that was an absolute stonking nightmare <laughs> <Having to do laughs> that. um if you find him on instagram it's um pi par that's p-y-e p-a-r-r uh definitely need to you know like i say there's a page there's an actual original page of his I'm, I'm going to risk saying it on here now. There's um, which is a cover of Realm of the Damned, the second book, which is currently on his website, which is definitely big on my wish list. How much? Uh, uh, I'm not, not going to say it on there. Go on, <laughs> say, te text me. Okay, so. okay. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, you know, but um, I'm guessing he's, he does some lovely screen prints as well. So, and I, I think since discovering realm of the damned he's been one of my top artists and i don't know you know 
and I mentioned that the first book a couple of years ago, didn't I? Where after the two thousand eight AD fortieth, right? So, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I wanted to properly sort of shine a light and just focus on this guy's work. He does oil paintings and stuff as well, and it's all just really nice and you know. So Piper, I'm looking forward to more of his work, and um, yeah, and. Who knows? One day I might have some more on my wall. We'll, we'll see. So that's my choice. Yeah. That's my choice. And my honorable mention. Yeah, when we're millionaires. <laughs> yeah, when we're millionaires. Um, well, I mean, you're talking from the West Wing, aren't you, Tony? And Dan's yeah. in the East Wing. I'm in the. I'm in the Northern. I'm in the penthouse. So. <laughs> Fuck off! You're in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking at the stars. I've pulled the ball um, gag off. Oh, you're allowed oh, to. Da 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 da. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> And my honourable mentions, I've got two honourable mentions I just want to shout. One of them has already been mentioned on the show, Claire Spiller. Always a massive fan of Claire's work. And yes, yeah, certainly it raised, was on my shortlist as well for the for the series. But she does wonderful sort of like animal artwork throughout, throughout the year. She's, and just follow her on Twitter and Instagram. She does wonderful prints of like, I think she's doing like different sort of breeds of animal, whether it be birds. Yeah, that's or great. I, I love liking them. Every time I see them, they yeah, come up. Yeah, so yeah. I've good. got an original um, Jessica Jones. She did me actually. Really yes, nice. yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, just wonderful stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Claire's work. So looking forward to see what, seeing what she's going to do in the new year. And another one, uh, Lisa Richardson. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, um, I'm hoping she does another calendar for 2021 um, because we've just finished the 2020 calendar, which every month was an absolute fucking joy to look at because Lisa's work is so lovely, like watercolours and coloured pencils and stuff. She's also got um, uh, her own sort of like Instagram strip and things like that and like very good humour. She's um, she's got a little illustration book about folk horror and etc. She's one of the band collective. Um, Much love to all of them out there. Hope you're all doing well. Um, but yeah, definitely follow Lisa as well because yeah, I just love their work, and that's my choice. I need a I need a new calendar for the office. I've got a, a crappy, yeah. boring Ryman's I'll, one. I'll tell you what, if anyone to... out there has got a calendar, they can uh, they can put put my way. I'll buy it. Just completely, let me know. completely. Yeah. I completely agree because you know you go into the the shops and they're just all shit, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Of... oh another pugs calendar. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, it's Simon's yeah. cat. No, no, no offense to Simon's a cat, but it's just like they've just taken a, a like a like one panel from a strip and it. Yeah. Yeah. Milking the shit out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Sunday sport calendar didn't even come out this year. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> it's something, like to look, face. something to look forward yeah. to, isn't it, Tony? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's like we remember when you used to buy extra bags of nuts in the pub, so they pulled them off, so you'd see the the extra boob underneath. So remember who, those. So who's your um, choice for best? <laughs> was, Tony, a tweet Tony. That, I can't remember what the subject was. But someone says, "Who has porn in their house on Christmas?" And like the Sunday Sport responded with, "We do in ours." <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> God. <laughs> Okay, um, mine, my artist. I've got. I'll do my my um my mentions first. So, a couple of the same. Cliff Cumber, our oh, buddy, love Cliff, mm-hmm. and he's yeah. amazing. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And he did me my Christmas card, which I sent you, which is not for everyone, to be fair. But I, yeah. I did put it in. <laughs> Thanks, Cliff. Falpy, um, he and I co-publishers. I like to describe ourselves, or just nutters who sit about making shit up. Um, so we just, you know, he's absolute joy to work with Adam. It, 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 him and uh, Daryl Thorpe I'm working with at the moment both just balls of energy just brilliant you know you can as a, a person who's twice their age it's just a joy to work with people like that uh, Benjamin Mara um, who did the cover to our second issue of Herc mm. the alternate cover and um, I, I follow his webcomic go back a couple of episodes and you'll hear about that Paul Ashley Brown who's another member of the BAM Collective um, I'm a fan of his work did you pick any of his stuff up Vince when we were at BAM you remember he was next to me at the first band. Do you remember? Yeah, I don't think I got a chance to. He's great, man. He's yeah. just sent us out of the blue. He just sent me this thing saying, "Oh, any chance of you know if you want to use this as a back cover or a pin up? Here's a picture of Tommy Herc. And it was like it was Mike oh, yeah. McMahon. Good, yeah. just incredible. I sent it to you guys. That's tonight. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brian Rankin is buddy of ours. I like Brian's stuff. It's sort of we've been chatting to it for a few years, but then I saw that Alan Moore comic and it just made me laugh. Against you, my rain, and again. Um, just because he sent me a picture of a poo a second ago, the mighty cannon. So uh, Johnny Cannon, he's. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure he was working on next. It Transylvania Nights too, maybe. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him do oh, stuff. I can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, with James McCullough. Um artist. So I've gone mainstream again, guys, because he's a master. He is one of the best people out there, and 
you can't get away you can't get around it he is um he's part of that um post toth post wally wood um you know m- you know less is more with just absolute instinctual instinctual ability and it's chris samney yes we talked about firepower i think we all read it early in the start of the year didn't we um yeah, yeah. just um just absolutely brilliant almost made it onto my um favorite series the only reason it didn't make it onto my favorite series is the art is absolutely stunning but the story just has sort of gone around a bit in circles for the first six issues enough, still yeah. sort of seem, seemingly based in the bloke's garden every issue but um uh, but that's kirkman fear do you know what i mean but yeah I'm, I'm glad he's on a kirkman book i'm hoping he's making loads of money out of it i'm hoping he's get he gets a you know a tv deal as much as i'm a bit done with tv superheroing but i'm I'm hoping he makes he makes enough money just to carry on giving us art like this because it's just incredible there's he um it's it's so the first book was away in the himalayas wasn't it we all read it there's with that sort of kunlun kind of feel to it um and the 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 actual series that spins out of it i think it's up to issue six now is based in suburban america and he's married and he has kids and it's about him deciding what he wants to do does he go back to the temple does he stay with his family and his hand is to, to a certain extent and uh, and it this pushes on every issue is being forced to do something um, and he meets old friends and, and he meets new assassins and the fights are just so good if there was ever anyone who could translate um a Shaw brothers kung fu fight into a comic this this dude Every, everything has movement the thing about it's, it's the dichotomy of comics isn't it we, it's a static image that we want it that we want to show movement yeah that's that's the whole key to a lot of stuff and you know he he has that fluidity and he has that um he can he can choreograph a fight and he knows where like we talked about last week with that uh, master of kung fu sequence he knows where yeah. where to land what to do what has weight what doesn't have weight what shows a strike what doesn't show a strike you know how deadly everything needs to be so good and throw into that it all happens in a sort of kitchen of a house or in the garden and there's a dog and there's a couple of kids who try to help out and yeah just uh fucking draw everything chris if you could please <laughs> you just just if we could clone you just get you to draw everything and that would be great it's so strange what you said like you see the movement but i don't want to see that animated no, I don't either. No, no, no not at all. I want yeah, to see the movement in, in the mind. page. It works in my grey matter. That's where it works. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the ability to show that between panels, mm. isn't it, and stuff. The artistry yeah. and yeah, doing that has. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we got an Invincible cartoon next year, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I want to watch it, but yeah, to me, like Invincible is the comic and yeah, takes a step down when it's animated. I, I watched yeah. the because I, I couldn't sleep last night. I watched the Batman Year One cartoon again. Um, okay, what's that like? It's all right because it's about Gordon. Mm. Okay, it's a character yeah, it, study of Gordon. If and they use they if use it's done well, and like animation can absolutely smash it. Can I, but there's yeah. a couple of bits. There's, yeah. It starts off with this plane landing, and it just looks like a computer model of a plane. They do that a lot. Yeah, uh, they do that a lot. Yeah. I don't mean to be like um, the boy who watched uh, Hilda series two, and he loved it. But there's a sequence with like a, an airplane or something, and that, and it's like well, that's three D. It's been traced. Mm, or, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit I'm not going to knock people doing that, but mm. uh, yeah, this is what it is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's um, there, but there's whole panels that seem to be taken out of the comic and transferred. It's yeah, good. okay. It's, and it's fairly, it's fairly close to what happens in the comic. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you'd like it. It's um, one of the better ones. There's some. What's it? The 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 killing joke isn't that a fucking abomination? Fuck right. Yeah, that's that's upset, awesome. I've watched that's, that this year. Yeah, that's upset yeah. me enough that we're not talking about animation anymore. Right. Okay. Right, that good. was um, okay. that was so shit. Anyway, <laughs> but Chris <laughs> Samney is an absolute fucking legend. Yes. So yeah, we yeah. loved that book, didn't we? Mm. Are you guys up to date, or are you waiting for the trade on the the continuing series? Yeah, I've only read the, the miniseries, so I'm gonna yeah, I want to get that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the one off. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That was fucking guys. dynamite. That was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. As well, uh, punch at the end when it jumps back to, like you say, the suburban. You're like, what? Yeah. 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 And suddenly you get that airship and you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. good. Okay. Good. Last few. Um, yep. That comic smell. There are buddies. Yeah. Um, just look Bench. for that comic smell. Um, it's on SoundCloud. That comic smell on Twitter. Uh, TCS. Um, they, they're kind of our Scottish brothers, aren't they, really? You know, and we, we we hang about with them at conventions, and I chat to them constantly, and they're good eggs. All herded by by Tom. Um, yeah, have a listen to them. Andrew Clemson, uh, 
is the website is Clemson C L E M S O N Clemson Comics dot com. Um, at Andrew Clemson on Twitter, he kindly donated. He's a, a comic creator, and you can look for Damsel of Damsel for Distress, and it's D dot I dot S. You know, it's like uh, it's like Shield. Mm. Damsel <laughs> for Distress. Uh, probably uh, the donation that blew us away the most. I, I, I won't say the amount, but Steve Sims. Thanks, Steve. Mm. Like amazing. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Um, we're big fans of Steve's and have been since we first saw it. I think uh, I can't remember where it was. We first saw it, but we've we've definitely True kept believers up. Was when we noticed that. Well, I think when we were launching, all the James, comic. James Gibbs came over with uh, ba- Battle Badges. Yeah. Like, ah, check this right. out, and we're like, fucking hell. We were like, what the? F-? And and he had already put out, I think, three issues by that point, hadn't he? I think. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. Like, right. class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely he's he's in the. Um, your Jimbo League, isn't he? He's that that's the sort yeah. of area. Yeah. T- t- uh, uh, turtles kind of stuff. You want yeah. to read his stuff. So you can go to www.battlebadgers.co.uk, which is like the best website ever, uh, or at Battle Badgers on Twitter. You can get hold of Steve. It's very cool of you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Uh, another one, Steve Ingram. Steve, Stephen Ingram at bigcartel.com. You can get his comics, of which there are a number. Quiet, biographical, um, sensitively told but with, with a, a real insight into personality and stuff. The, I read Holly a couple of weeks ago after backing on Kickstarter. Really good. You can find Stephen at Stephen Ingram Art uh, on Twitter. And our final one, Neil Johnson, who's a regular on the Drink and Draws. Neil, thank you for pledging. Uh, thank you for donating. Um, and he, on, he's asked, can we just give him a shout-out to his Instagram, that Insta Johnson. Um, that Insta Johnson. He does a sort of combination on there. Have you had a look at this, anyone? He does a combination no, of... No. Um, it, it looks a bit like an illustrated illustrated story panel maybe like a um a storyboard um but he does do comics as well but it's this is that that line that sort of somewhere between illustrated prose comics and storyboards and that's that's what he's doing it's, it's interesting really interesting guy and um I, I suck a couple of artists his way and he was sort of, oh it's really interesting yeah. there's a there's a touch of the tom cioli's about his heart actually i think if you if you like tom cioli um then, then you'll probably like you like Neil's stuff. Yeah, he's good egg. So there you go. That's all our good eggs for the moment. But you can still donate. So if you want to donate yeah. to a charity, um, you can get um, a shout out on here. Or if you want to donate uh, twenty pounds, you can get a short interview, and thirty pounds, you can get some some art from Vince, some art art from Dan, or uh, a critique of your comic by me. But if you just want to donate, you'll get you'll definitely you'll get sent a badge by Sarah Harris, our buddy, um, and you'll get um, a shout out on the podcast as well. So there you go. There you go. Fantastic, and thank you, thank you to all, everyone that has donated so far. You are absolutely amazing, all of you. Yeah, definitely. Right, okay. What's the next one, Tony? Company, company. Okay. Uh, one caveat: we didn't mention at the start of the show. We we agreed not to talk about each other's books to promote because yeah. yeah. we're all wonderful and great, but <laughs> we don't want to be don't want to be that. There was we'll a little why. We'll have a little roll through because we've had quite a few replies. We'll have a little roll through after this one and before the final one. We'll have a little roll through what everyone else has been saying on social media because we put a shout yeah. out for your favourites. So don't don't worry. We'll we'll probably try and get to you in a minute. Yeah. For me, there's one company that has absolutely just smacked out of the park this year uh, for titles, and that is Avery Hill. Okay. Ah, uh, nice. Victory Point. Uh, break. Um, blanking on the name. Breakwater. Air. Breakwater. And uh, Billy Scott. Yeah. All three titles I've uh, read and conceived this year and uh, loved them all. They've had a strong year, haven't they? They've yeah. had a very strong year. And I think they're kind of uh, the selection process of the guys uh, just really is you know, paying dividends. Just the, the, the eye to select these these great creators and, and publish their work. Uh, every, all of them something different to say and they're all brilliant books. I've uh, read each of those multiple times and and, and got something else out of them on every read. I really enjoyed speaking to the creator. So shame we can't I'm trying to get Oliver the the chap's name he wrote Victory Point. It's a good thing I prepared prepped. prepped oh, that. Owen Pomery. Owen Pomery, yes. Uh, if we could get him on the show and speak to him about it, but uh, oh, no, I know I've known him for quite yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, he did British Ice, which I, we, I know was put out by Top Shelf at gotcha. the end of last year as well, wasn't he? So he's, I think just the way that the slates worked. He's had two big books out in you know eighteen months, yeah. But uh, yeah, Avery Hill once again just absolutely doing fantastic work and putting out fantastic books. Uh, nice. Hard to say much more about him, really. Nice Good stuff, yeah. and but uh, and all the nicest people in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really nice, and really been on the show multiple times, I think, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my pick um, was uh, 
a publisher that that came onto my radar, and then it seemed like uh, it was almost like I was sponsored by them, even though I wasn't, because I just kept <laughs> mentioning their books all the time. Uh, that's Scout Comics, um, yes. who sort of came onto the radar, and they they they're putting out so many books at the moment, uh, so many sort of so sort of, but like indie books as well and there's, there's there's certainly some titles that I've I've seen that have become part of their stable now uh one such title is Drexler um which we loved uh, Nate Nate yes. was on the show talking about that and that's now part of Scout Comics as well so it's doing its own thing but they they just just the the murderer's row of amazing books if you just go on the scoutcomics.com and just look through the titles you like Fr- frank at home at the farm it has become part of it yeah. grit was on there do you know what i mean i've i've mentioned several it, <laughs> it eats what feeds it or, you know things like that um oh my god i can see providence providence of madness is going to be on there oh yes yeah that's a new title that i'm looking forward to next year um yeah, so much so that they're starting to set up their own. You know how there's the a publisher has an imprint. You know, like like here's where you go for your horror. Here's where you um go yeah. for the the uh, sort of adult books or whatever, or the all ages and stuff like that. Um, they they're starting the Black Caravan, which is their um horror corner. That sounds well. Ah. Maybe they've so, never yeah. been to an UK caravan park. <laughs> Let's not yeah. get into that, Tony. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with Steve <laughs> McFadden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but they, <laughs> they, they seem to be doing good work, and they're doing it because I think they just want to get comics out there, which is is good. They also do like like if you're in the states, and you want to like get because subscription boxes, you, you can get subscriptions on everything now, can't you? Really, um, yep. whether it be razors, pants, cheese, um, Dan Butcher. No, I'm only checking. Um, it's a one-off payment. Uh, although, yeah, Bitcoin, might, that is. although check his Patreon. No, um, <laughs> only fans. Only fans. Only fans. It's only fans. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, for instance, they do like a monthly uh, subscription box, which includes up to like twelve new new Scout comics every month, starting at like thirty three ninety nine dollars a month. If if you're you know in the states, obviously oh, okay. with the UK like the it's probably not oh, available trouble, to us because of uh. yeah yeah post and all of that nonsense but seriously you know if you can get you know I, I love that sort of idea if you just want to sign up for a whole load of books it's it's just great stuff so yeah scout comics love them they haven't given me any money yet. i just want to say that <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was like a couple of it seemed to be a few months wasn't it where i just kept discovering but you know and it wasn't yeah. it wasn't one of those they would send, you know, I was getting freebies. I, I was literally like looking at a list and going, what the hell's that? And then I was just, I was discovering it and so many good books. So, yes, that, so it, w- it would have been stupid if I didn't mention them. Hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Tony. Oh, I've had my heart broken this year, as you know. <laughs> yeah. It's been a bad year, isn't it? Yeah. And this, is, this is the one that yeah. I really, really had to, soul search on long dog walks about what i was gonna (laughs) what i was gonna go for yeah i mean just seems that everyone's in trouble or squabbling so a lack of consistency at marvel um comic companies like valiant seemingly reversing out of the industry although we we are we are buoyed a little bit by the fact that they sent us some uh some comps to to read this week which um Mm -hmm. ray and exo the ray stuff amazing um DC with all their strange firing incidents and uh, dramas and don't, I don't think they yeah, they know what they're doing and Dio for me was a big loss. I loved Dan Dio having met him at New York and he, what a what a dude. Mm-hmm. Um, Image for me carries onwards, but I'm I've fallen off buying a lot of their titles. I certainly was buying much more in the in previous three or four years. Yeah. Um, TKO wasn't feeling their last their last set of releases. Not to me in for something that I enjoyed as much. I preferred their first yeah. raft, though. This was there on their third raft, aren't they? Sarah um, started off so strong. Sarah. It did. It really did. And sentient as well. Yeah. Um and uh Magnetic Press, I'm really digging what they're doing, the translation stuff they're doing. There's some really some really interesting stuff coming out of them. AWA, um, we were on there very kindly. They sent us some of their books and we reviewed some so far. Uh, American Ronin, brilliant stuff. We're really liking their, their books as well. But a bit a bit too new for me. I'm just I wanted something that was I was really feeling. Uh, 2000 AD and Rebellion. Um, still putting out 2000 AD, which is patchy. Although the Christmas book's amazing, 
I don't know, just I get the sense they seem to actively dislike anyone that's not members of staff. <laughs> um, I was going to go with Avery, <laughs> I was going to go with Avery Hill, but I don't think they're making comics specifically for my sort of taste, although they are very good. Mm. Um, uh, Panographics has been great. Paco um, Rocker's book I talked about last week. Peter Banks repackaging and stuff mm. really good. But after all my soul searching, I decided I just wanted to um, name a comic book company that was putting out comics that just were fun. I decided I just wanted to go for the fun element mm. uh, to a comic company that um, by weight, if you wanted to weigh the amount of comics I've bought in the last three months, um, would probably win because I think I've bought, I think it's 15 trades in the last two months from this company and roared through them. And that's Dynamite. Um, they've all got a reputation of being slightly schlocky, slightly silly, a little bit TNA, and I'm going to probably agree with you on all of that, really. Mm. Um, but they are fun, and um, some of the titles that they put out, they put out the, the Red Sonja titles, which are great. Vampirella, Vampirella Red Sonja, uh, Barbarella, you see where this is going, Elvira. <laughs> uh, so there, there seems to be a lot of Ellas, Ellas, yeah. Ellas. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. There's a lot, hey. there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of boobs, boobs. But yeah, the uh, uh, Mars Attacks and Red Sonja, um, Dynamite. They put out. They started putting out Green Hornet again at the start of the year, and um, I don't know. I just, I just wanted something uncynical, and you know, wasn't forcing some kind of ridiculous message that a 52 year old man knows and has known for a number of years down my throat. I just thought I want to read something that's fun, and um, that's what they are. There's then some of the artwork can be a little, little patchy, but there's um, Joseph Linzer's in there. Mirko Kolak. I'd read Mirko Kolak till 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 I fell asleep every day all the time. Um, <laughs> But the uh, yes, dynamite, just fun. Just uh, I've ripped through. Tr- you know, I'll, I'll read a couple of trades a week of theirs, if not more. So at the weekend, I was reading four or five at one point. Um, but yeah, good Deja Thoris, Barbarella. How's that for a title? A lot of uh, these titles are on uh, Bloody Woodcut, aren't they? Uh, yeah, some of the slightly older stuff's on there. Yeah, it counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's in there and uh, Vampirella um, Aliens is <laughs> 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 on there, and it's written by. Um, Who's uh, Corinne Betchko? Um, it's pretty good. It's all right. I yeah, I mean, I was reading when fucking the chestburster comes out of Vampirella. Yeah. And she survives it, obviously. And yeah. has to go from there. That's Vampirella. a real bold move. Yeah, the true hero we need is Vampirella. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I, I read I, them monthly now. I buy them monthly. I don't just buy the trades. I'm on board for a pool list with them all now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. good. There you go. So that's my one, Dynamite. Yeah. I uh, think the kind of the reason one of the reasons that Mandalorian TV series is going so well is because it's just honest to goodness, untroubled fun. Yeah, just there's no political kind of heavy political messaging or pandering. It's just yeah, fun. Do you know what I don't. Mean? I don't mind. I don't mind messaging as not as long no, as it's not, not some twenty four year old is going. Excuse me, boomer. Have you heard of racism? I say yes. Thank yeah. you. You know. If you want to uh, explore, uh, for me, it's different for only exploring a political theme or message in your book, like the one coming up does, and preaching yeah. it. Yeah. Don't to ask, ask people questions and get them to question, re, re, reevaluate what they're thinking. Treat don't get them some intelligence. Yeah. yeah don't yeah. preach to people saying this is what you should be thinking if you don't think it, there's something wrong with you. Which uh, I mean, if half these people who preach about stuff had actually helped anyone in their lives, then I would be impressed with them. But most of them haven't. They just sit on Twitter, like you know, eulog- eulogizing. Yeah, there goes a word. That's a good word. Bloody hell, you're doing the old Dan's dictionary corner. Oh, yeah. This one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. So we're out of um, we're out of adverts. Did did one of you want to have a look at Twitter, and I'll have a look at um, Facebook, and we we give a shout out to a few people. Uh, you want to do yeah. that? Um, give me a sec. Okay, all right. Drop this on us. Yeah. So, so I've got the uh, the Facebook one here. So quite a few comments. Um, Gordon Brett. He said he's enjoyed the Armory Wars by Claudio Sanchez. He's out of that good that that good band, isn't he? Um, oh, Coheed and Cambrian, isn't he? Um, oh, and yeah. he's also yeah. Gordon's also enjoyed Knights versus Pirates by Reckless Heroes and Murder by John Tucker. There you go, man of taste. Uh, Matt Bunce, uh, we just mentioned him, Shaman Kane, um, and I'm also thoroughly enjoying Department of the Peculiar. John Tucker, uh, multi-nominated in the ACP yeah. faves, He's, he said, uh, Matt Dooley's Flake, Rob Guillory on Farmhand. Did you read that, V? 
I, I read the first issue of Farmhand. It was very, very good. But I just it, too many titles just didn't get didn't get oh, a chance yeah. to sort get of. To it. Yeah, yeah. Lucy uh, Kinsley, uh, go to sleep. I miss you. Vince Hunt and Daniel Chant. Black. There you go. What's happened to Black? When's it coming back? New Year. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> that's a plan. <laughs> Uh, Tony, Tony Esmond and Cliff Cumber. Tony Osmond is a movie star. Thank you. Thank Brilliant. you very much. Yeah, and books. Leslie Steen, I know you, Ryder. Um, Dave Robertson has done a, like a picture of all of them, including Atomic Hercules. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Sarah Ra Ra Ra, Homecoming. Star Jaws. That's a good book. It makes me laugh. Journey's Descent of the Earth 2. Kent State. Star Trek The Enterprise Logs, which is the original Gold Key stuff. What We Don't Talk About from Avery Hill again. And New Gods. He said there were some of these phase reads of the year. Um, David Livens, I might read this actually. Uh, honestly, whilst it might sound a bit sycophantic, your podcast, it spurred me on to hear you gushing over, make of that whatever you will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so many great indie artists. In turn, I found myself constantly inspired and pushed me pushed me to create uh, and even with more fervor than I already had. Well, that's, and he's, that's the magic words. That's yes. it, man. That's what we want. Uh, yeah. As for books, Lorenzo Etherington's How to Think When You Draw Book, which um, and also Grew the Wanderer, which I'm a big fan of. Good stuff. Thanks, man. Amazing. That's really kind of So you. on the Twitter, Charles Raymond, uh, he said, hadn't, hadn't read much this year, but these take the top spot, which is John Tucker's The King and the impending blindness of Billy Scott. Uh, yeah. That comic smell, who we mentioned earlier, hey. have got a raft <laughs> of, of names because they read everything, those boys. Um, yeah. So the Penguin, I'm just going to name just a couple of them. Um, okay. Uh, Holly by Stephen Ingram, um, Sarah Ra Ra. Uh, do you know <laughs> Olivia yeah, Hicks? I don't yeah. know what that one is. Um, yeah. What we mean by yesterday by Ben Mara. The Junction by Norm Conyu. Um, oh yeah. Uh, the multiple releases from Tribute Press. <laughs> make hey. of that. Make of that sort of wording. <laughs> However you want. <laughs> um, Avery Hill had some absolute beauties. Uh, Midwinter yeah. by T.J. Bird. Um, those are the ones that are stuck out for them. Oh, and they did they did add on Oh, and the Firepower Prelude. Lovely. Yes, uh, nice. uh Zach Cobb, um, who always joins us on the drink and draw. Yeah, shout um, out Zach. Yeah. Uh, Zach he's also a also donated. I don't know why he's not on the list. I might have missed him out, but yeah. Thanks, Zach. Zach's um putting out his own comics now, isn't he? He's done he's been in a few anthologies, yeah. he's in the Whip anthology. Yeah, he's a, he's an artist on the rise and his work another one like Stu I like a couple of others, it's really improving, man. I'm really enjoying yeah. the way he's doing stuff. He put some great stuff out on the Drink and Draw last week, actually, two weeks ago. Yeah, nice. Um, he said he's really enjoyed Hawkeye Freefall, and oh, he's yeah. been he's been delving into Jack Kirby's creations, starting with Mister Miracle. Wow, what a journey he's going to have to dump yeah. into Jack. Um, and there's lots of good stuff from the small press. Um, John Tucker again, and Reckless Heroes Knights versus Pirates. Uh, Tom Curry at this chucklehead, Die from Image, and the webcomic Law Olympus have both been amazing. Uh, seeing, the uh. pi- seeing the picture of Law Olympus, that looks like something that, that would be right up my street. Isn't yeah, it? I saw that and I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Sam Webster, SJ Web- Webster Art, he reread Scarlet Spider and thoroughly enjoyed it, which looks okay. like um, it's around. Uh, a versus X. That's around 2012. That's Scarlet Spider, I think. My Hero Academia continues to be a fantastic read week to week. Mm. Um, and he's a dude that knows who's a manga and anime. Manga, and, yeah. And last one, Alan Henderson, uh, the mighty penguin. Um, he says, Is it sad that the best books I've read this year have been those from circa 1990? Basically, <laughs> the research for Never Iron Anything. And I will say, Yes, it is, Alan. It is sad. Sort your life out. <laughs> no, no, that was no, no. Nice that's so amazing. Me and, amazing. Me and Al basically compete to do the amount of research for that podcast. Yeah. We do have a, uh, he's great. I love Al. Yeah. Top, yeah. top bloke. Uh, shall I do a couple more? Um, yeah. yeah. Simon Russell, I've enjoyed more pods than comics this year, and ACP never lets me down. Thanks, Simon. Oh, oh thanks, uh, Simon. David Craner, uh, he says, for me, it's the independent stuff of all. I'm truly blown away by it. Bring on next year. Damien Edwardson, uh, Ed, Edwardson has said, podcast, ACP, MCBC, and NIL, keeping the love of comics alive. Artists, a bit odd, but I've been loved watching Stuart Mulrain improve. Yeah, me me too, man. Good stuff. Yeah. He's uh, said Kent State, MI666. Look at that. Hey, you man of taste. Hey. Uh, Rock the God and Battle Badges. Good stuff. Um, uh, Eamon Clark said Altitude, which is a book we yeah. reviewed, yeah. God, about six, seven months ago. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Blow, mm-hmm. blow your way. Beautiful. Um, and Cliff Cumber. Good old Cliff. Murder by John Tucker. The King by John Tucker. 
Atomic Hercules, thanks, man. Very kind of you. Uh, a transgressive laugh out loud series. Not sure how Tony and uh, Adam get away with it. That's true. Scroll Comics Magazine. Another sh- the first, of, the first, which I, I'm guessing will be a series of shouts for Scroll because it's now hitting people's uh, yeah. in books. Black by Vince Hunt and Daniel Macchant. Um, absolutely brilliant Instagram web comic. Special mention: Space Warp. Hey, hey. Uh, good stuff, man. Uh, he says full disclosure. I'm involved, but it is still brilliant. It is still utterly mm. brilliant. Have you got any more, guys? No, I think that's it, isn't it? That's a lot. And just so you know, I'm not putting all of those in the show notes, by the way. No, no. They're all amazing. Go, go and seek them out, but I'm not spending a week doing that. Yeah. I've, just got a couple more. I've just got a couple more then. Uh, Lucy Sullivan, um, Femme Magnifique, created by Shelley Bond, The Hard Tomorrow by Ella Davis, and her favourite series is Homesick Pilots by Daniel Watters, Wingard, and Biddicar. Oh, uh, nice. It's sheer punk horror brilliance. You See, liked that last week, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I think... Yeah. I, you know that was one of the ones that was so fresh in the mind i thought i could easily talk about that but no i think it if it keeps going how it's going to be it's going to be a shoe in for my best of next year oh good stuff uh, okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh good stuff man um pete davis says his favorite's been the entire small press community without many of you twats this year would have been a thousand percent worse good, <laughs> good job, pete. Like, I, like, I like listening to pete he's always got yeah. something to say and he? he's always yeah. interested Gareth Hopkins, I honestly don't know what I've read this year. A bunch of Larry Hammer Wolverines from 1994. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, That's right. we know That's where... Right. Yeah, this year has been a funny year and it sort of pickled our brains and we really had to sort of, you know, look through the muddy water to to remember what we read this year, what we didn't. I mean, Tony started the yeah. year with a with a huge list in January, which... Well, I'm going to do that again to contrast yeah. and compare this year. That's yeah. A, yeah, good shout. Mm. I've got a couple more. There's uh, Stuart Moraine, uh, The King and Murder, Volume 1 by John Tucker. Good stuff. Gal- Galaxy Grappling Alliance by Damien Edwardson. Good stuff. Yeah, is, that's, uh, is he working on three now? I think he is, isn't he? Yeah, we've done two. So, yeah, three. Cool. Tony Osman is a movie star. Thanks, man. Um, MI666, look at that. Hey. Um, Vince and Andy Bloor. Beast Hunting Battle Badges by Steve Sims. Atomic Hercules by me and Adam. Thanks, dude. Pirates versus Knights versus Pirates by Chris Imber, Chris Jenkins and Jay Martin. And from DC... There's a and this is the page I was talking about in Superman. It's Superman 18, um, which is the one that he and I talked about, where he gives up his identity to Perry White, and it's there's no words, just brilliantly done. Um, and Brian Rankin, Buddy does Seattle. Um, thanks to Tony because I think I, I recommended it to him. And Sweet Tooth, which I think there's a new Sweet Tooth series come out as well, which looks pretty good. I must get on that. And Sarah recommended that to him. So there you go. Hmm. That's the whole of the Facebook ones. Good stuff, guys. Nice. That's I, right. I, I, okay, we have one final one, and this can This is the all-round awesome choice, um, because when we we're putting together these lists, there was one title, there was one one name that we all. I mean, we've all got. You know, we love all of the books that were that every single one of us has mentioned here, but but this one we were all we're all on the same page. Yeah, all in agreement. This one. Yeah, um, hit us for different reasons in different ways, but yes, um, Tony, if you just want to mention what our all-round awesome choice for the year of 2020 okay. is. So for 2020 is Kent State by Durf Back Durf. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and tells the story of the terrible um, incident that happened at Kent State University, um, and it's it's. A, it's a documentary comic in a way isn't it it's uh, yeah. a retelling a reimagining or not reimagining at all because it's a retelling through huge amounts of research and detail and work put in by Durf and the next thing that's worth saying to that is what a guest how cool was yeah. that yeah, it's fantastic on. to everyone yeah, yeah. and it's, it's kind of really gratifying to see him getting nominated for so many awards and getting in so many best ofs and I know a couple of weeks ago we saw a best of mentioned in the Guardian, and they didn't mention this, and to me, that completely eliminates that best of list as worth. Yeah, worth yeah anything. I don't know how you could even yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, mean, I, I think it, I think if you read comics or you love comics as an art, um, and even if you're someone that's like, well, I don't read those kind of comics. Listen up, I don't I, read those kind of comics. I, I don't. I don't normally, you know, no. these sort of things. They don't normally appeal to me, um, and certainly, I, I will. I will say now. This is the first Durf back Durf I've properly read, um, yeah. and it was from this that I'm going back to read other stuff, yeah. um, because obviously, like Tony talked about on the show, we immediately, you know, we were looking at pages, we were discussing it. Me and Dan then went away and we got copies ourselves, read them, and it's just, you know, it's just mind blowing comics mm. it, it, on so many different levels. Um, you know, the, the research. 
is is phenomenal. Um, I mean, I'm just going to talk about it now, just from like the comic page, the sequential storytelling, the 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 moments of let's face it, brutality that it, it builds up to, and it's like a powder. It's actually pressure it's, cooker. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a pressure the cooker that builds and builds, and the way that it it I, I don't want to I'm going to say the word payoff, but I don't mean it. In, in that sort of term, you no, know? yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a tragic event. But the, the way it all comes that, to a head, the way the asset, the way that all comes to a head, is so masterfully done, um, um, through both the artwork and, let's face it, the cold descriptions of yep. this person, th- this real life person who is no longer on this earth, and yeah. and it hits you like a punch in the gut. And I mean, he spoke to people who were there and yeah. people who knew the people and yeah. stuff. That's going for it. That's doing proper research. That's not just sitting on the fucking internet looking up going on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Yeah. 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 Mm. And it's being it's getting and, there and talking to the people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of one of my favourite episodes that we've done this year was when he was on. Um, yeah. Partly because obviously we love this book and it's nice to nice to also get a name like Durf back Durf because obviously like my friend Dharma and stuff like that you know just purely from that but a being such a great guy um, and also good good sense of humour as well do you know what I mean it's like you know he's yep. creating, creating work like this but he also does funny work as well um, but he's well thought out and like I I highly recommend if you haven't listened to that episode where we talk about Kent State go back after this episode and listen to and it give it a listen that's that's also one of i think our best interviews guys yeah. i think we really i mean we we're known for being i like to think we're insightful with our interviews but having a sense of humor about ourselves yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we showed that we can do both at once on that as always I was when really we proud turn of on the serious we can do the serious we're all kind of yeah. learning people and yeah. kind of yeah i think we've got yeah. something to say about yeah. the, the the stuff we read and talk about yeah uh, yeah being it's serious and being insightful does not have to be boring. Yeah, and they're so not mutually, yeah they're not mutually exclusive. Just, mm. You're not yeah. you don't have to be stupid it, and silly. At all also, this that. show is very much like someone at a convention literally asking a creator, "How did you do this?" Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're not journalists. We're not no one's paying, we're not professional journalists doing this. For, for me, yeah. he was someone I'd seen about, and uh, until uh, Tom Stewart, give a little shout out to Tom and Dave again, yeah. who pushed it by my way to read my friend Darwin. It's something I hadn't read or always seen on the shelf, yeah. but I'd seen his work about, and it was. <clears throat> to me, it was quite underground. There's mm. an underground feel to it, but to distill that, and his line was slightly cleaner. Sorry, <clears throat> his line was slightly cleaner on the page, and but it became perfect for that period of time. You know, it was it, just it, just it, right. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got into it through uh, <clears throat> when he did the Never Iron and Anything podcast about Dharma, and I can remember I read it years and years and years ago, and I just didn't really take it on. Oh, okay, it really struck when. I was like, oh my god, I have to get that book again, and I did, and I was just absolutely captivated by it. So his yeah. take on it, you talk about writers and artists leveling up. That was like the next step, such a bigger was, stage, wasn't it? Such yeah. a bigger cast, and it, the uh, I mean, it, well, where'd you go from a serial killer? But yeah, yeah, yeah. corralling like we had one central figure, the Dharma, and maybe a few periphery ones, and then next one you got you got to track all these people from every single side of it. And again, it doesn't present the story as like. These guys are right. These guys are yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's just like this is a. There's uh, no sixth uh, form politics there, is there? Yeah, That's the journalism of yeah. saying that this is how it all played out, and you're not, the art, the, the artist is trying to tell it as absolutely like straight as possible. Every single action is backed up by fact, and if he's challenged by it, there's pages and pages of footnotes at the back, and the yeah. fact that's done tons and tons of research. Sometimes, it's, it, go on. yeah. Sometimes when it comes to sort of events or moments like this you have to stop and look at it's a tragedy and you have to look at it as the tragedy forget about like you know the, the he said she said political black and you know whatever that is sometimes you just have to look at the event and and, and be touched by how tragic and awful it is mm. um, yeah and this this gets to that because it's like no matter what you know this, this happened um you know and then it it, it makes you um and certainly from from a UK reader, we don't know about any of this. No, really. I, it was just, honestly didn't know any. Yeah. Really, pretty much didn't know anything yeah. about this. Especially like a lot of, um, you know, younger readers as well. Um, and certainly, you know, I mean, this happened in the seventies as well, didn't it, Tony? So, it was um, yeah. absolutely like tied yeah. into Vietnam. Wasn't yeah. It? So you know, it, it's fascinating to. I mean, this this is 
you know, schools need to be teaching this. Yeah. I yeah. mean, with hopefully the American schools do. I mean, mm. the idea of being put into national service to go over and fight in fucking Vietnam mm. because you're a certain age group. Like, mm. imagine you said that now in, in the UK. Mm. Yeah. People would go fucking nuts. You'd never want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I think when a book like, like this is at its most powerful is not when it's not when it's telling you how to think it's getting you to ask questions and making up your you know, exactly and get, yeah. go, going to find out the information so then you're well informed and that's that's kind of uh, what this book does one of the subject matters you touched on i did a bit of reading on later in the year and it's the fact of uh the the national guardsmen how they how they could do what they did and it's like being in the group and being kind of like a, a, a almost like faceless entity of kind of like the, the state and it's very easy to kind of get corralled into that and mm. people would say well how can that happen? And I read up an incident it also started in the seventies uh, called the Wave, and this a teacher oh, was yeah. uh, showing his class about uh, the Holocaust and the Nazis and how many people died. And the students were like, "Well, how, why didn't the people do something? Why didn't they stand up?" And he was yeah. like, "Well, it's very easy to do say that, but when it comes along and you're swept up on it, to be the one person that stands out and does something." And essentially the students rubbished it. So over the next couple of days, he went home and he, he read and researched about Nazism and fascism. And he started introducing this program into his class called The Wave. And over the next couple of weeks, all the students had joined up. They're all wearing the uniforms, all got the salute. If you're not in the oh in-group, you're getting pushed out. <laughs> and then he said, right, we'll get all the members we can and we're going to go in this hall. And I'm part of like one of the leaders all over the, the America. And we've got an, a, a senior politician who's the leader of the wave, and he's going to come on and address the nation. And when he put the TV on, obviously it's Adolf Hitler giving a speech, and the students are absolutely like distraught because they've made this big claim that they it wouldn't happen to them, mm, and yeah. they they just oh walked straight into it. That's, and yeah. obviously they wouldn't do that to students nowadays, but they they still talk about it as the kind of like an experiment. And uh, they yeah, yeah, I was re- I literally re- reading about it on Friday, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely fascinating. That I wish more lessons were taught like that, but you can see why they won't because some kids, I can imagine, that would absolutely fuck their lives up. Yeah, yeah, uh, be, and, some, uh, yeah. Don't somebody teach would kids sue them, they? Uh, no, yeah, but they're saying it's so easy to kind of march into it. Same with the the, the people in the Kent State, like the, the soldiers kind of did this stuff, and mm. if they were to like just circumstance and getting corralled into it and oh it's horrible yeah it's, it's very yeah, easy he, to demonize he, people to say that what they yeah leave. i think so but he paints a bit of that bit of the um the sort of crowd mentality thing on both sides doesn't he exactly as well. yeah yeah exactly, yeah kind of like it's a, very much them and us i mean the whole town was the the students versus the local populace yeah and when just before we did the show with Dave, I was watching some documentaries, and I could not believe what the locals were saying after the shooting, yeah. saying that oh they deserved it and they were asking for it and all this, and you're like fucking hell. And there there was a, like, a genuine rumor that went around the town at the time that um they'd put LSD in the water, so people weren't drinking from their taps for because they believed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, kind of like kind of hysteria starts. I'd have drunk two pints straight away. And people say, oh, no, it won't happen. Uh, when people are running down fucking buying all the toilet rolls. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't be me doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got all these anti-vaxxers yeah. and all these sort of people yeah. like, you know, mm. Christ almighty. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mate said on Facebook that this, so that's why I'm not taking the vaccine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. But... Glad you get your news. Is it, was it that I saw that, that, that meme going around, isn't it? That people who are pro-vaccination, where they get their news from, and it was someone, you know, watching a news TV, scrolling through the internet, you know, reading papers yeah. on it, and then where anti-vaxxers get their news, and it's got someone sitting doing a shit looking at their phone. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about uh, matters. Uh, so, yeah. Kent well State, done, yeah. Yes, yeah, well so Kent done, State Steph. is the all-round, yeah, well like, it's just Fantastic. it's just an absolute standout book. Um, so, yeah, and it, and it's a big book as well. So, And if you haven't read it, treat yourself to it. Okay. Yeah, it'd be a nice little, order it from Amazon and you can read it between Christmas and New Year um, or other online, you know, retailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, you'll enjoy it because it's... Uh, Get your independent bookshop to order it in. Yeah. 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 And and you won't regret it. It's, it'll sit very proudly. If, the, if they're not in tier four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Look, people might be listening to this uh, in five years' time when we're we're all living on boats. Two um, forty-three, yeah. <laughs> and they cover the listening device from yeah. the, the ruins. So what's this? <laughs> so um, yeah, so those were our choices. Um, keep the conversation going online, etc., et and just you know take take our little cat- categories and just start sharing them out to the world just let just let them know what your favorite choices of the year were um copy in the creators you love and let's just share like good books because that's what we need right now just you know th- this this show normally upsets people because they they buy a lot of books because because of recommendations and that's that's how indie comics basically survives most of the time let's be honest um i've bought an awful lot of books because people have recommended them to people so keep the conversation going um because th- it's been a year and <laughs> and and it's been a year for comics so we all need good good comics in our, in our life but we just want to no let's do some shout outs first do we have any shout outs gents we've got i mean i know we have the list but have we got any other sort of and the other, i mean it's probably you know shout out to everyone who's listened or downloaded or yeah. interacted yes. with us i suppose it's yes. been a it's been quite a year and it's been a year of us being inside and talking about comics and reading comics rather than going out and meeting people but yeah. I, I feel like i'm you know the, you know almost every day someone will reach out to me on you know skype or facetime and i'll chat to them about what they're reading about and stuff like that and uh it's keeping all of us sane i think to be mm. fair Yes, yeah. and uh, it's been yeah. nice for everyone. Definitely, thank you to everyone who's been listening to this show over this crazy year, and we hope we've we've kept you entertained and uh, introduced you to some comics or like help you make comics and stuff. Um, we, we're going to go away over the Christmas. We've got some fun left for the rest of the year, but we're going to figure out some title not, match next week. Vince. Some, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah the time we'll get into that at the end of the show. Oh, I'm writing the questions talk, this week. I've talk, started. Talk, I've started writing fun. them. Yeah, you know where to send the answers, don't you, Tony? I'm only joking with this. Um, well, Lots has given me 100 quid, so you'll have to top that, my friend. Uh, I'm joking, no one's giving me any money. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, um, no, but no, but seriously, thank you for listening and supporting the show um, yeah. throughout the year. We, we truly appreciate it. And um, yeah, um, thank you for checking out the creators that, that we talk to, because they're all, yeah. they've all been amazing. So thank you to cool. all the people that have talked to us this year as well. I've got a little shout out if you don't mind is okay. um just a thanks from the point of view of tribute press thanks to everyone who's uh who's helped us along we started about 10 months ago um in that time we've put out six issues six comics which we're quite proud of a couple yeah. of web comics and a couple of one um, um some prints and a print size comic so yeah, we've done all right and we're pleased you've, and, uh, you've been absolutely cooking with gas dude you've been awesome you've been churning it out some yeah. new things in the year. Thanks, man. And we got some new things in the year. So thanks, everyone. Keep an eye on it because um, we're probably going to put out a bit of a state of the union in the next few days. And we're going to, um, we're, we're working like bastards on the next few issues. So there you go. Thanks, Brilliant. guys. Nice. Uh, I got a mini shout out for a creator that um, always does a funny bit of artwork, Sam Schaefer. He sent me a little uh, sort of an eight page sort of Christmas card. It was a nice little um, sort of. Oh, nice. Yeah, a little A6 folded little uh, comedy. Um, sort of illustrated book, um, the holiday spirits: a guide to Christmas cryptids, um, which is quite nice and they're all funny. The two of my favourites are the unknown uncle. Um, few have ever seen him in the flesh, but many have borne witness to his work. Every year, millions of households receive a holiday card from a relative they don't remember. It is said that the double U feeds off the guilt and confusion that this causes. And, and the other one, and Tony will probably know this: one of the holiday cryptids is the Great Escape on TV. Oh yeah. Like Tales that, yeah. are told of this creature once being a plentiful sight. Many old people will speak of it as if it is synonymous with Christmas. However, very little evidence exists to show that it ever really happened. Apparently, that's <laughs> the one there's a couple of these things, but that's the program. I heard someone from the BBC say every time they put it on television, they get the same viewership. Really? So they, really? they could put it on twice a year and the same number of people would watch it. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when it, I'm turning it to my yeah. dad, is in fact that whenever there's a war film on, even black and white, whatever, it's like, I'm fucking down with this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the Dirty Dozen was filmed at the top of my road, some of it. Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah, so always look out for that one. Like where uh, Eagles Dare was on even today or t- yesterday, and I was Another like, classic. let's get into this. Yeah. Nice. Isla, shoot Wolf for the SS, I always watch that. <laughs> nice, nice. I've got to do my comedy 
find the most inappropriate film ever and say, oh, that's Christmas family <laughs> name film sorted. I usually make that joke once a year. So. Oh, good. Try shit piss fuck three. <laughs> For one and two with Barnstormers. So, yeah. Uh, you, you've, worked, you've worked that plot out already, but now, yeah, pretty good. Now, <laughs> with all of this comics joy that we've talked about, we're almost running, we're running out of time. Um, what do you want to do? A cut, say a couple of things that we're hoping for in the new year. Yeah, I, mean, I, like, I think yeah. I think so. Yeah. I mean, okay. we, we we could probably. I mean, it's been a tough year on everyone in, in a lot of ways. Um, whether it be um, you're making comics or you know with with family friends or whatever, and we hope you're all okay. Um, but yeah, let, let's 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 keep the good vibes going. Cause in, so you know, what would we like to see um, next year? D man, yeah. Like? I'll tell you what. I I feel like the reins have been handed to uh, small press and indie comics. I feel like that. That's where I'm looking. Uh, most of my reading, ninety nine percent of my reading this year has been small press stuff. Yeah. Okay. And just, I think it's going to go from strength to strength. I think where the kind of the bigger guys are kind of a bit lost, and I think they're going to find it very difficult in the months, year to come. Yeah. Uh, that gives an opportunity for people creating their own comics to kind of step up and maybe get their work noticed and get get it out there. Uh, the the audience is there for you. You make your comic, and if it's a good comic, people are gonna are gonna buy it. Mm. So, what's stopping you? Go for yeah. it. Yeah, yep. yeah. You, I mean, yeah. Everyone can make a comic, um, but I mean, it's always is very difficult. Obviously, finding the audience, which is something we always talk about on this show. But like you say, like. There's been, I mean, just look at Kickstarter. Jesus, um, yep. the second half of this this year, um, that will slow down in the new year because of like lots of postage and all of that. You know, certain details will change. Yeah, things. I've gone to digital for a lot of stuff now. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, I've just great wait deal. for it to go. And I think the thing is, for a lot of pro stuff, or a lot of sort of near pro stuff, I'm just going to wait for it to hit um, comic shops. I think, yeah, we might, yeah. I think we yeah. might see a wave of um, like Ryan Kane, Liz, Ryan K. Lindsay, our pal did with dear editor you know it's just a straight up just digital book pay, pay yeah. a couple of dollars yeah. you get a digital book um which which is fine you know you know treat it like a pre-ordering system like that do you know what i mean that's they gotta start thinking about printing in other countries yeah. and having for markets elsewhere you've got to have an agent you know you could pay you could pay 100 quid to who gets it printed for you and delivered to their house and posted out from there mm. they've got to start thinking because the postage from the states is just so ridiculous now yeah yeah. We don't okay. know uh, what's going to happen next year as well with yeah. Brexit stuff. That's going to yeah. yeah. It would increase prices. Not going to decrease prices. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah, the Marvel app, mate. That's the way forward. Yeah, I'm still fucking old school. I do really want physical copies of the books I'm reading. Right, but... Yeah. I know Vince. Well, CV. How much did you spend on Masterworks this week? Cut, you know, four quid, five quid, <laughs> four quid. I think. Yeah. You will be able to that's... get that with. Yeah, um, that's that. All of them are on. All of them and more. Everything in that sale is on Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, and would cost you eight quid a month. Yeah, it's worth thinking about. I think, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I mean, I think at the it. moment, um, uh, the, the older stuff is what would buy me into that, Tony. I would say, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Um, And there's only a three month lag on releases. And mm. I know. I do you know? I can't even. I can't even say it's because of this or because of that or you know but the big two just doesn't interest me any, uh, right now no, any, any, anymore um it's, i'm still i'm still getting physical copies but of the big two but i'm like oh this this just stuff on there i almost almost regret buying mm. but there's month a, there, after month i mean for me there could also be some there, there could also be some absolutely amazing stuff that i'm missing out on there surely, yeah. there surely is, but it's just not where it's not where my focus lies at the moment. I, yeah. I, like Dan says, it's the independent stuff. Um, it's, I mean, my my view has switched even more to just discovering new stuff. What what you know, I want to be I want to be that person that sort of goes. I remember, I, you know, I was the first one that discovered them. Now that they're massive, they're not as good. Um, I want to be that person. Do you know what I mean? The person that has yeah. that joy like the of punk dis- band guy. Yeah, discovering yeah. the punk band before anyone else knows it. I, I'm, I'm always searching for that fix, um, which is why, uh, like, I'm, I always love like talking about like new books and new creations and stuff. And yeah, that's why it's a recommendation. 
you know. Or when like, they're kind of uh, like the the unicorn, not the horse, designed by a committee. Do you know what I mean? Like the one or two creators who come together, put a book out, like Atomic Hercules, and it's mm. what it is. It's absolutely what is, it sets out to be, and there's no one holding it back. There's um, no weight of anything else on no. for it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you uh, mean. Yeah. Yeah, can yeah. I say, can I say one of mine? Yeah, sure. Okay, so one of the ones I've got is um, I just I'm just I just really hope people start talking about comics again. Mm. Yes. Um, I'm I'm sick and tired of even podcasts that I've listened to for ages turning them on and all they do is talk about TV and movies and I'm yeah I'm sick of it, man. Um, I, you know, I, when all the Daredevils and Jessica Jones and Punishers and Luke Cage's all came on television, I watched them all in a day. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I stayed up late to watch them all just to get them all in, and I was so excited. But with this, like, what is it, like 400 fucking series coming out? Mm. I'm like, it's just sucking the mojo out, and then it's it's taken away from the time that I want to sit down and read a comic. And it's, I've got I've got a comic room with a big TV in it, but I rarely turn the TV on anymore. I just come up here to yeah. read comics. Most of the time, I've, all these new stuff that's coming out in comics, I'm not even bothering with it anymore. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just not interested in it. I mean, I'm so two faced because I just ordered the Blu ray of New Mutants. You know, but I'm like, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, I just don't. I'm not. I'm not interested in the what if cartoon because it's it's not helping comics seemingly. Yeah. But um, that, that that audience isn't. You know, we're we're not not that audience, or or maybe maybe yeah, that's are, you know. I'm, that's I'm the in, problem. Well, we've sort how much of would looking... it take? How much would it take to put an advert for a, the actual comic in before the TV? It, it wouldn't take anything, but they don't care. They don't, man. They don't care at all. They don't. No, they don't. Breaks my heart. These they, we're living in what could be the best possible time ever for comics. We comic characters rule the world at the moment. Mm. Yeah, you know, the cinema, the TV, everything, um, but except for the fucking comics. I yeah, feel like it like... needs to be taken back to kind of take it back to formula <laughs> to quote Spider Man, mm. uh, <laughs> the movie. That's <laughs> so. <laughs> But like, kind of, yeah, we need to start getting these comic books back into the shops where kids can get them. And yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think up. the direct market was the start of the, the drip feed of terror that became, yeah. you know, making it just a hobby for special people who it's go into like, special shops. Yeah, it's this circling the drain. It's the, the, the it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. The amount of people it's drawing in, and you know where that ends. You know what I mean? And everyone need... says, oh, but the comics are selling. You know, but that's about three comics. I sent you the chart, didn't I, this week? Yeah, you mm-hmm. say oh, comics are doing really well, like these trades. And then you look, they're like Dogman and there's the, the the kind of teen younger kids books, and they're selling millions and millions and millions. And the rest of them just pretty much nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like when I hear like some of the numbers that Kickstart people are doing, and they're beating like the the big publishers, mm. and yeah. they're small indie and crazy. You got to start asking questions. What the yeah. fuck is going on, you, man? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You got to start thinking more like Scholastic. But this is all ignorance. Yeah. I've got to say, you know. like I'm talking from complete ignorance. I'm not in oh, the yeah, industry. Oh yeah, completely. And everything, like we always say on this show, everything is our our opinion and from from what we know. You know, don't take anything as fact because we we know. Authority. Yeah, I mean we can only, we can only speak from experience, yeah. but I am bored yeah. of uh, uh, at least three comic shops this year. I've walked in and engaged them about comics yeah. at the counter, and they've changed the subject to talk about movies. And some of these sites that are set up, all the people do is talk. Like you know, I've been railing on a certain site, a hmm. uh, certain comic company for every advert seems to be about another company's movies. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know it's it's an utter fantasy that people stop talking about movies and TV and start talking about comics, but it's it would be if even you know, if I had a one wish, you know, mm. if I yeah. I'll be guessing a couple of that. times. But I don't like yeah. the if you're going to have a comic, who would you cast as your characters? I don't really I've not considered it too much to be honest. But no, they live in the comic. comic for me. They live there on yeah, the page. So the comic don't, characters. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Um, okay, and I think um, the obvious um, one that we haven't touched is um, it's just going to be nice to see you all again. Uh, yeah, we, we, that's we, my yeah, comic yeah, we, we, return. Yeah, yeah, conventions return, comic events return. Um, sometimes just meeting up with some of you lovely people just just for a meal or anything like oh, that. Oh, it really it's, invigorates me going to a con. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hats off to anyone who kind of held a digital con, but they're not really working for me. Yeah, uh, the numbers aren't big either. You look at some no. of the YouTube videos that are coming out of these, mm. and the American cons especially, they're not huge. You know, mm. it's yeah. the, the you cannot replicate the con yeah. experience yeah. Uh, uh, digitally. It's not going to work. Yeah. And right, I think the uh, thing is as well, I think what a lot of these cons are doing is they're putting their panels out as digital features, which I think is the best option they've, get, yeah. they've got, isn't it? Yeah. But if you go to a panel at a convention, they're rarely full. Unless you're a San Diego or New York, the panels are rarely full, aren't they? No. Um, the real the real highlight of the convention is chatting over the table and 
in the me bar and, afterwards and stuff like that, yeah, which is stuff they can't really... and people readers. Mm. Can't yeah, do they it. can't create that, can they? Yeah. yeah. So obviously, we hope that happens as soon as it can. These things take time. So uh, uh, until until that time when we when we can all do all that stuff again then uh, everyone for god's sake just be sensible and look after yourselves and we hope you're okay and just keep creating comics you know uh, what I mean? comics will help i think there was an mcm this. was saying that like may was it may and it's like well, that's not gonna happen no. i don't think it's gonna that happen. won't happen yeah. no but i think later on in the year we've got a good chance of getting cons back yeah. um, i'm almost thinking for a bubble yeah yeah could well be um uh, we will of course be um you know, we we don't do weekly news, but I think when it comes to stuff like this, we will sort of probably be discussing if any big yeah, news comes out. Yeah, conventions are baby, and it conventions yeah. is our scene. So I think yeah, yeah we will we keep you updated yeah, on keep, keep you updated, uh, and and certainly, you know, if if you are planning, if you're a comic convention uh, organizer and you are planning something and you've had to cancel or you know tell us your plans or you know what you're hoping for, and we will put shout outs about it and see see what's going yeah. on as well. Um, because this is a community we're all in it together um we we literally are in it together um so yeah we, we're just hoping for the best in, in 2021 and you know we'll probably talk uh we'll talk a little bit of shop next week anyway to, before we sign off the year completely after yep. the after the fun we're gonna have um we'll, we'll talk about some things that we we've we've got in the pipeline or what we're working on and stuff but yeah it's been a hell of a year and if it wasn't, yeah. is it what if it wasn't for you two bastards, <laughs> um, Lord knows where we'd be, eh? Same man. So... This has been like a bloody a linchpin in my life coming through to you guys to sort yeah. of see me through. It's yeah. been it's been good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So thank you to all all you lovely people who have supported us. But yeah, there's, as you can tell, there's no recommendations this week. <laughs> no recommend because. Sorry, you've had a fucking two hours of recommendations just a minute ago. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a long one again. We're going long again, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's it's you know what what is a, a favour of the year show without doing that? And thank yeah, you definitely. very much for listening um, this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, if if there's anything that you want to get in touch with us about, um, even if it's just say Merry Christmas, you can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail dot com. Follow us on Twitter at the Awesome Pod, where we will be shouting out about the charity drive, which will still be happening for the rest of the month. Um, so give if you can, um, all for a good cause, whatever cause you want, um, and we'll love you for it. Um, if you do the book of faces, go to facebook.com slash awesome comics podcast. We mentioned it a couple of times tonight, but join up the awesome comics talk group just search for awesome comics yeah. talk on facebook literally if you if you're one of those people's like oh i hate facebook I, I i'm with you this group's the only thing that you want to go there for um because it's a load of wonderful people who love comics whether it be creators fans readers convention organ- organizers they're just there to talk about comics and it's a brilliant community and surely when everyone's got some downtime over the christmas period that hopefully will be quite active I would imagine. Yeah, we, Christmas Eve we got yeah. our art swap. Yep. Yeah, I've just finished mine. Secret Santa. Oh, Tony, you're smashing it, dude. Well, mine's all but done. Yeah. Do little... I'm very needy. You know, I'm very needy. I put it on our little WhatsApp group and you didn't comment for 10 minutes and it made me feel a bit down about it. But I'm, yeah, I'm feeling better now. <laughs> so you should because it's brilliant. So, yeah, so join the Facebook group and look on that thread because there's going to be some amazing art flying about on there. So, yeah, Awesome Comics Talk on Facebook. Thank you for listening to us, whether it was on the website, awesomecomics.podbean.com. We are on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and leave a review. It helps get a word out about the show. And therefore, all of the indie creators that we talk about on a weekly basis, which is what we're here for. Well, actually, we're probably just here to amuse ourselves, aren't we? That's what it's yeah, become, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A bit of that. Yeah. Uh, no, but we're also on other networks like Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Podnose, Podknife. What other networks are we on, Tony? We're on Pod. Sit down, you slaphead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke that certainly won't go in the outtakes. That'll never get repeated. No, that'll never get repeated. Um, <laughs> but we'll, what will be repeated is this. We love you all. We hope you have an amazing Christmas. Um, because it's gonna. this is the last show before Christmas, isn't it? Crimbo. Yeah, yeah. can't wait for the big day. That's, yeah. that's crazy so wherever you are whatever you're doing whoever you're with we hope you um, stay safe 
happy, healthy. Have a good, have a good Christmas. Recent, let us know what graphic novels or comics or whatever you're going. To yeah, be we'll put up a little with. Christmas gift thread. What yeah. did you get in your comics yeah. gift? Yeah, the, gift, the yeah. comics hall. I've missed comics <laughs> hall photos. Yeah, uh, from yeah. conventions. So let's do some mini ones, like you know, if because we're all going to get surely all of us are going to get at least one comic in some ways. Hopefully, um, if you do, let's start a thread. On you know, we'll probably put one on the Twitter and probably on the Facebook. And then just yep. let's just join in. Um, yeah, but have an amazing holiday time wherever you are in the world. We hope you're okay, happy, healthy, and we love you. Thank you for sticking with us this long. There's plenty more to come, and it's still not going to be any more professional. Um, but where no. can people find us online, etc.? Tony, uh, tributepress.bigcartel.com or neveironanything.bigcartel.com. Atomic Hercules is going to go live on their digital version and physical copy in the next couple of days. We're just waiting for everyone to get their pre ordered one through the post. Amazing. Dan. Fantastic. <coughs> you can find me on Twitter at Vanguard Comic and Vanguard Returns in 2021. I've yes. been drawing that uh, this week. And uh, in 2021, you can buy Viper uh, as soon as that's kind of fulfilled to the Kickstarter backers. I'll be offering that up for uh, people to buy in 2021. So keep your eyes Yay. peeled. So good. Oh, shout out that bit of fan art. That you oh, got yeah. Oh, God, yeah. That, man. yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, and the person whose name did it completely escapes me. <laughs> Dig that up while um, I, I let them know. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Jester Diablo. Where do you know what? I think over the Christmas period, I might do some drawing. I haven't done that Yay. for a while. <laughs> it was it's Mark terrible Olivent. that that gets a cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it, D? Mark Olivent on Twitter. There you go. At there you go. Mark, one. Mark Olivent. He's an absolutely fantastic artist, and he did an amazing vamp, uh, Viper pinup. Oh, just, out blue, man. just out of the blue, man. Yeah, just it? out of the blue. Yeah, just out of the blue. He backed the project digitally and he read the comic. He really enjoyed it. So he did some uh, fan art. I've been getting some quite a lot of good feedback from Viper. So it won't feel yeah. so because it was a cracking, a cracking book. So they, there you go. Do I say cracking or crapping? Either way, oh, it, it cracked way. solid gold. That's how good it was. <laughs> oh, dear. It's been a long night. It's been a long year. Yeah. But we'll see you next week for the big fat awesome quiz of the year yeah. round three round three <laughs> Can you better be bringing your A game yeah. I'm, not right, I'm not writing some any soft cock questions this time my friends yeah. you've got to bring your A game Yeah, last time was pretty hard yeah it was actually no <laughs> I mean we, we're not going to talk a good game because half the time me and Dan like I don't know this <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I bust out the word. It, it was, it's usually a theoric victory every yeah. time. So for those who don't, <laughs> don't know, or any new listeners, or whatever, to sign off the year, we always do just just a quiz, you know, because it's is you know end of year quiz sort of thing. And it's it's just a bit of fun. And every every year we've had a different sort of podcast crew come in, step into our yard, and give us a good kicking. And every year we've just about managed just, to uh, edged it. <laughs> just, yeah. we've edged it every time so yeah me and Dan Butcher versus the lakes yeah there we go. Ian Nicky from the lakes no it's not Ian and Nicky, Nicky. No, I think it's Ian and Pete I think Nicky's Pete. doing uh, Nicky's doing the scores oh oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Nicky's going to be in, like uh, the Paul Bearer oh. yeah Nicky's going to be in uh, uh, Comics Code Corner oh no <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I told you there's no pushover. Yeah. Pete's a fucking encyclopedia. I know. I'm calling <laughs> in sick. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me down. I'm washing my hair that that night. Vince and Dan and the Mega Powers. I want a I yeah. want a montage of you guys hitting the comics this week. A little video. Yeah. you I mean, <laughs> can I be matching man, Dan? In that. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. No one wants to be Hulk Hogan these days, so sucks to be you. Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> just back in um, Hulk of the 80s where he's just doing loads of drugs oh yes nothing but drugs that's what we're... sticking no, it that's... in his arm non-stop yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> but thank you for sticking this into your ears oh that no that was I can't sign off for that that, that works that works, yeah, that, 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 was works. Fine, wasn't it? <laughs> that was fine um, thank you very much for listening everyone have a brilliant week have a brilliant Christmas and from Dan, Tony and myself read loads of comics make loads of comics stay festive and as always, what should they do, guys? Stay, Stay awesome. awesome. Oh, oh my god! My god.
That's how we do it. That's how we do. And you didn't have practice either, did you? No. It's out of your ass. Fucking hell. <laughs> it's, it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs>